It's cool enough that the players will be comfortable all day long, especially the team that's ahead. Uh, but I, I think that uh, right now, that with no wind, it's going to be important for the Bulldogs to get off to a good start. As you can see, the deep receivers at the far side, Kelly Skipper, and at the near side, Gene Taylor. Jim Nielsen will kick off for Oregon State. Oregon's new uniforms this year. They used to wear black with orange numerals, but since David Craigthorpe took over as head coach, he has new uniforms of orange with the white numerals and the white helmets. Yes, but the jerseys are all too big for them. I think they would have been too big for the Chicago Bears. Well, there's a story there. They ordered the uniforms about six months ago. The manufacturer, for some reason or other, didn't get them until three days before the first game, which was uh, two weekends ago. And they were all extra large. So if the uniforms of Oregon State look a little floppy, why, you can understand. Well, maybe they're using that for psychological reasons. They want uh, the Bulldogs to think that they're small guys and the jerseys are all too big for them, which they are. Well, we're all set to go now. The ball was blown off the tee, and Nielsen is ready to kick off. And there goes the wind. We didn't have any wind about five, ten minutes ago, and all of a sudden we're so close to the Pacific Ocean about, oh, I'd say 45 minutes drive away from the ocean, and uh, the wind has come up now and blowing the ball off the tee. If it happens a third time, I'll bet you'll have to have somebody out there holding. We'll see. There, there, there goes a third time. Right? Well, they've got to have somebody holding now. That's all there is to it. By the way, while we have this opportunity, the referee is Colin McDermott. The umpire, Mel Patterson. The head linesman, Aaron Pointer. The line judge, Mike Perea. Field judge, Bill Constance. The side judge, Dean Crowley. And the back judge, Jim Northcott. All of the officials are from the Pac-10. No split through here today because it's the Pac-10 versus the PCAA. And now we are finally underway at Parker Stadium. It'll be Kelly Skipper, five yards deep. Automatic touchback, and we will put it in play from the 20-yard line. So let's check over the starting lineup now for the Bulldogs of Fresno State. At quarterback will be Kevin Sweeney. The fullback, Lavelle Thomas, and the tailback, James Williams. Baker, Taylor, and Flug are the receivers. Paul Flug getting the starting nod today at tight end. We'll pick up the interior line right after this first play from scrimmage. Sweeney wants to pass. Brought down around the 14. Sweeney wanted to go for either Baker or Plug, but they were covered. As you look at the offensive line for Fresno State, and it was Rich Haggerty and Andre Todd who made the tackle. They will spot the ball at the 14, second. Second down and 16 now for the Bulldogs. This time it'll be Williams over tackle. Williams picks up a couple to the 17, but that's all. A gain of three by Williams over tackle. Michael Lopez, the strong safety, the first man to make contact for Oregon State. Third down and 13 now. As you look at the defensive lineup for Oregon State, Mingo, Alfieri, Haggerty, and Todd along the front line. The linebackers, Parker Schneider and Ose Lewis. Third and 13 at the 17 of Fresno State. Here comes Williams. Gets to the 22. A five-yard pickup by James Williams. Ose Lewis on the hit. And now the Bulldogs will be called upon to punt on fourth and long. Northington, Monson, Lopez, Odegaard in the secondary for Oregon State. Eric Hoshaver over on the sideline shouting words of encouragement to his teammates as Robert Adams drops back deep for Oregon State. The punter is Mike Mancini. High snap from center, and Mancini picks it up. Oh, is he level? The hit made by Jamie Norman. Mancini never could find the handle. A very high pass from center, and Mancini couldn't quite hang on to it. Then he bobbles the ball around a little bit. Then he gets really belted by Norman, and it's a, puts the Bulldogs way deep in the hole, just like they did last week at the start of the football game against Nevada Las Vegas. Oregon State with a golden opportunity. First and goal at the Fresno State 9. 
Wilhelm, Jordan, and Malone in the backfield. Wilhelm is the left-handed freshman quarterback. In motion, Reggie Bynum. Wilhelm throws in the corner for Bynum, overthrew his man, and perhaps he was just throwing it away because Bynum had two men on him. He had Brian Nichols over there, along with uh, Rod Stewart, or Rod uh, Webster. Second and goal at the Fresno State Nine. Checking over the Oregon State offense. Key man is Lester, the center for Oregon State. Dave Montagna is wide to the left side. Bynum is on the right side. He's flanked to the right. Now he moves to the left. Second and goal. And off goes to Lane, Carl Lane, and he's out of bounds right around the eight or nine yard line. It'll be Peterson and Michael Stewart on the tackle. Here comes Lane, number 23, and Lane is out of bounds at the eight. Good pursuit by Fresno State. Yes, and uh, I want to say that uh, Grayson played that very well. He turned to play back in. He played it very well. Pacheo is not in there today, nor is Mason for Fresno State. In fact, they didn't even make the trip out with injuries. Wilhelm is going to be sacked by Hanneman, the rover back of Fresno State. Hanneman jumped all over his back at the 12. Let's watch uh, Hanneman come through here, a little blitz job. He gets to Wilhelm and downs him, number 77. Makes a great defensive play. It looks like the Bulldogs might dodge a bullet here and get by with only giving up three points, which would be a, a, a good effort on the part of the Bulldog defense. The place kicker is Jim Nielsen, who has never missed a field goal. He's 10 out of 10 in his career here at Oregon State. The holder is Montagna, and Nielsen drills it through. So Oregon State capitalized on that uh, high snap from center, and they were able to capitalize for a total of three points, thanks to the field goal by Jim Nielsen. We've played a little over two and a half minutes in the first quarter, and it's three-nothing Beavers over the Bulldogs. Three-nothing Oregon State, and Nielsen will try to kick off again, but again, the wind blows the ball off the tee. That might be a new NCAA record, W. Doherty. Well, if it's not, it's a darn good average. <laughs> I'll say. That, uh, that's four times now and two attempts. Back in 1981, Fresno State came in here and, as you alluded to at the outset, piled up a 28 to nothing halftime lead, but the Beavers rallied and won 31 to 28. Kelly Skipper at the two. Across the 20 to about the 22. Skipper, you know, is just down the road, about 40 miles away from here, Eugene, Oregon. I was going to say this is homecoming for Kelly Skipper. He was the leading ground gainer in all the, among all the high school uh, runners last year in the state of Oregon. Mike Matthews made the tackle on Kelly Skipper, and the Bulldogs will have a first and 10 now from their 21. That's what Kevin Sweeney did last week against UNLV as the Bulldogs won 26-6 over the Rebels. Lavelle Thomas, James Williams split backs for Sweeney. Lavelle, maybe a yard. Lavelle Thomas hit right away in his tracks. He had taken two steps by Osei Lewis. Well, Lewis is quite a story. He's from Tucson, Arizona. Came to Oregon State as a quarterback. Then they made him into a defensive back. Hence his number seven. And they switched him to wide receiver. And he's now a linebacker. Unusual to see a linebacker with the number seven. Second down nine at the Fresno State 22. throwing this one complete to Stephen Baker. First down for the Bulldogs. He was nailed at the 37 by Don Odegaard, the right quarterback. Well, uh, Kevin was sharp. Kevin was sharp in his warm-up before the game, Kevin Sweeney, and uh, he was sharp throwing that ball there to, to Baker, and it, uh, right on the money for a first down. First and 10, the ball is at the 37. 
where in the early minutes of the first turn, he played about four and a half. Trying to get to the outside is James Williams. And Williams is rolled out of bounds at the 43. Williams, the junior tailback from Brunswick, Georgia, gains six rolled out of bounds by Levance Northington and Michael Lopez. Uh, Williams has deceptive speed. He doesn't look to be moving very fast. He doesn't lift his legs high. He sort of glides along, but he, you know, all he does is make yards. He runs strong to the ground. Second down and four at the 43. Julius Pitts is the new flanker back now for the Bulldogs. Taylor is out. <laughs> Lavelle Thomas. Lavelle Thomas into Oregon State territory. Good call by Kevin Sweeney. Cross him up. They thought they were going to get a pass or at least James Williams. Instead, it was Lavelle Thomas. And he goes to the 46 of Oregon State. Brought down by Don Odegaard. So it's another first down for the Bulldogs. That was a great offensive hole by the offensive line of the Bulldogs. They're doing an outstanding job right at this moment. 3-0 Oregon State. Williams going to be thrown for a loss. The hit made by Gino Mingo. And if that name sounds familiar, it should. His dad used to be the place kicker for the Denver Broncos of the American Football League. He got a lot of penetration there, and he just uh, blew right through the offensive line just after I praised him. Loss of two, second and 12 now at the Oregon State 48. Beavers three, Fresno State nothing. Just under 10 minutes left in this first quarter. Williams, 45. And Williams might have coughed up that ball, but I believe Fresno State makes the recovery there at about the 42. Terry Lafitte covering that bobble. Tackle was made by the middle linebacker of the Beavers, Jeff Snyder. This is an interesting yardage situation here, about third and five. Uh, I would look for Kevin to put the ball in the air here. Now, it's, uh, because they, they don't make it, they're going to have to punt the ball. Julius Pitts, Vince Wesson, wide right. From the Oregon State 42. Sweeney overthrows Wesson, letting too much at the 31. Well, Mike, he had to throw that, overthrow that ball because... Wesson was covered so closely. Had he thrown it, Kevin under throwing the ball, it would have been an interception and six points for Oregon State. Mike Mancini will be back to punt. And dropping back deep for Oregon State will be Robert Adams. Along with Michael Lopez. Adams will be the deep man standing back at his own head. Chris Dugan making the snap. Good punt this time by Mancini. Hits at the one and flips into the end zone for the automatic touchback. So Oregon State will start over from their 20-yard line, a 3 to nothing lead over Fresno State, 8.50 left in the first quarter. Wilhelm will be a quarterback for the orange-clad Oregon State Beavers. Darvin Malone will be the fullback. And either Carl Lane or Jerry Jordan, they alternate at tailback. Let's see. It'll be Jordan in there at tailback. But he's going out as a wide receiver. And now they switch, so they've got Malone and Jordan in the backfield. Wilhelm, nice fake. Now he hands off to Jordan, and a penalty marker is dropped as Jordan is dropped at the 17. With Hanneman in there covering very well for Fresno State. To be a loss of about three yards on the play. But let's see about this penalty. It was downfield. I think it was a flipping penalty, but I, I would think they would decline it now because they've lost uh, three yards. It'll be second and 13, or they could put it back there where it would be first and about uh, 18, I think, because the, the penalty occurred about five yards past the line of scrimmage. That, that was Rory Kelly, one of the captains for Fresno State, talking with referee Colin McDermott. The captains today for Fresno State, Anthony Mosley, Rourke Kelly, George Peterson, Terry Lafitte. Well, that shows you how much I know. <laughs> they, they took the penalty. It's, uh, well, it's six of one and I guess maybe eight of the other, whether you, whether you have second and 13 or first and 20, which they have now. Montagna, wide left. Bynum is a flanker to the right. 
Bynum in motion. Wilhelm on the delay to Darvin Malone, and he's going to be nailed back there, and a penalty marker goes down another time. He's uh, dropped at the eight-yard line. It'll be a loss of two more. They may be calling piling on here. I don't know if they're going to call a late hit here against the Beavers. Yes, I think they did. Let's see who came in late. Malone's still standing up. There, that, yeah, number five, Stewart. Well, or it could have been Dollarhide, 32. Five, uh, Stewart came in awfully late there, and that was a good call by the officials. The two of the, of the fine defensive players, Pachinko and Mason, are, I'm sure, back in uh, Fresno watching this game. Uh, they're, they can be proud right now of the way their teammates are trying to play extra hard because they know that uh, Mason and Pacheco aren't there to help them. The ball is at the 23 of Oregon State. Second and seven for the Beavers. Oregon State leads 3-0. Eight minutes to go in the first period. Wilhelm, out of time, across the middle. And he's able to complete the pass up to the 34. Ron Heller, the tight end, making the grab. And it's a first down for Oregon State. George Peterson, Michael Stewart on the tackle. Let's watch uh, Eric Wilhelm. He's got a lot of poise for a young freshman. He's a redshirt freshman. really a second year in college. He hangs in that bucket very well. Finds his tight end, Heller. Picks up necessary yardage for a first down. Gain of 11 on the pass play. And the Beavers with a first down from their 34. Look at all of the shifting going on. Trying to throw off that Fresno State defense. Nowhere. Jerry Jordan gets a yard or two. Just did get across the 35, and he was nailed hard by George Peterson, the 23-year-old senior from Fresno. Let's watch Peterson now. The linebacker step in and hits him. Oh, that's a good tackle. And it's second down and nine yards to go, Mike. And the, the defense is playing very well against the run, and they're going to have to put some heat on Wilhelm, the passer, because to give him all day long, he throws the ball very quick and accurately. On second and eight now from the 36. Wilhelm going for Bynum. Reggie's got it out of bounds. At the 45, but he caught the ball out of bounds, the 45. It's Grayson who was in pursuit of Bynum. Now that ball was thrown all the way across the field from the middle of the field right to the sidelines. And it had to be thrown perfectly because Bynum was covered. He's covered by Grayson. He's double covered, in fact. And he still got the ball there, even though it was a little bit late. Well, we've got another penalty. So we have penalties again today as we did a week ago. How many? Was it 33 or so? We had, we had 36 uh, last week oh. against Nevada, Las Vegas. And 32 of them were, were uh, applied. Four of them were declined. So the penalty now will move the ball back to the 26. It'll be second down and 18. Check it. That'll be uh, yeah, it's second down at 18. That's right. At the 26 on the holding penalty against Oregon State. And again, the Beavers in all sorts of shifts. Heller, number 48, moving over to tight end on the right side. Wilhelm the pass if he can. Completes it. Ron Heller, the tight end. And then he is leveled by Anthony Nunn, the linebacker. Well, that was a screen pass. A screen pass out to the left, and it was, uh, you watch it now. It was very well executed. However, it was very well played defensively. He had a two-man screen out in front of him. There's a very, very fine defensive play, and still third down, and now it's third down and about 18 again. Ball is at the 26 of Fresno State. Three nothing Beavers are the Bulldogs. We have a little over six minutes left in this first quarter. Mike Walden and Duffy Doherty. Wilhelm sets up to throw, dumps this one off. And the grab is made by Jerry Jordan. I think the Bulldogs will give them those three yard yes. gainers all day long, Mike. That's Anytime. Olsen Watch made the tackle. Watch the pass out here. A three yard gain out here to Jordan. All the deep receivers were covered very well by the Bulldog secondary. Here we come. Olsen in there, number 59. Knocks him out of bounds. Knocks Jordan out of bounds. Julius Pitts is awaiting the punt of uh, Pena. And he gets away a beauty. Fly goes down. Pena, look at Pitts retreating all the way to the 18. Up to the 35. 
and he's brought down. We've got penalty markers all over the field. One back know. here at about the 30, another one up here at around the 40. I don't know what the first flag was thrown for. That was thrown when the ball was still in the air. I know. A 40-yard punt by Pena I of Oregon State. The second one was probably a clipping penalty because that was after the punt re was returned about 20 yards. There's an old saying in a punt return that sometimes you have to give yardage to make yardage. You have to they had a punt return on to the left and they had to give yardage to the I see it's a penalty. illegal substitution. Uh oh. They might have had too many men on the field. Twelve men on the field during the punt the well about I guess it's uh unsportsmanlike conduct they call it. And he was 12 men against 11. Well, what they call it is an illegal substitution. And uh, we have a timeout taken here at Parker Stadium. We have 5:21 left in the first period of play, and it's three nothing Beavers. And the Beavers got that. In case you're just joining us on the telecast, when Mike Mancini was back to punt, and his punt took the snap high, muffed it, and Oregon State made the recovery, and they had to settle for the field goal by Nielsen, some 28 yards. But that was a big penalty because that that lets Oregon State retain the ball. We'll be right back to tell them, talk to you about it right after this message. Waiting for the first down. David Grayson, the linebacker, made the hit. Uh, Mike, that was a big penalty against the Bulldogs when they had 12 men on the receiving team. I'm sure the special team coach who's in charge of that will, will catch it from Sweeney. First down now. The ball is at the 42. The Fresno State 42-yard line. 3-0 Oregon State. Bynum is wide to the right side. The left-hander is facing away from our cameras, so he is more effective on disguising the plays. You can't see him because of the uniform on his handoff. And that one went to Darvin Malone, and Malone was tackled by Anthony Collier. Otherwise, the right-hander, you can see all of that intricate ball handling by the quarterback. Collier's laying a strange position, at least strange for him. That's the one that Pacheco holds down the, the nose guard or nose tackle, whatever you want to call him. But he made an excellent play there, coming off the center's block and making a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Second down 10 at the 42. Eric Wilhelm will put it up in the air. Ooh! The intended receiver, Carl Lane, really took a belt from Michael Stewart. Uh, that was, it was a good thing that they didn't call Michael on that. That was a little bit delayed. You know, that, uh, that could have been called uh, a dead ball fall. There are the stat on the freshman from Portland. He is the first quarterback starter at Oregon State since Terry Baker. And Terry Baker went on to win the Heisman Trophy. So far today, Wilhelm has completed four out of six for 21 yards. They're down in 10, the ball at the Fresno State 42. Looks like the Bulldogs got back. Wilhelm puts this one up for Bynum. He's got it. Out of bounds. Perfect pass from Wilhelm. Bynum out of bounds at the six. A 36-yard pass play. Wilhelm to Reggie Bynum. And it'll be Oregon State's ball. First and goal to go at the Fresno six. Well, even though the Bulldogs double covered Bynum, he still got a step on on the defender on number 28. Greg Williamson coming in special situation and took the ball over his shoulder. An outstanding, an outstanding catch. David Montagna is wide to the right. Lane in the backfield along with Darvin Malone. Montagna is moving out. First and goal from the six. It'll be Darvin Malone. He is stopped right at the six. Peterson in there, along with Victor Burnett. He's on the bottom of the pile. Victor Burnett at 6'5 and 240. Second and goal at the six. Well, the Bulldogs have completely shut down the Beavers running the killing game, and uh, I can see that all those good things they've been saying about Bynum, Reggie Bynum, have been deserved. He's an outstanding receiver. Second and goal at the six. Eric Wilhelm wants to... Oh, he, I think he almost completed a pass to himself. He was bumped so hard by Cliff Hanneman. The ball popped loose, and he grabbed it again before it fell to the turf. That's what, in golf, this is what's known as a member bounce. 
because watch uh, Wilhelm gets hit, the ball pops in the air, and he catches his own his own Ooh. fumble. There, he, his own fumble came right back in his arm. That's a real good break for the Beavers. What a hit by Cliff Hanneman, the 225-pound junior linebacker from Clovis, and then Victor Burnett polished him off. A loss of it on the play, third and goal, but the ball now is back to the 14. Wilhelm trying to throw again, completes it lane, and lane is hit at the 11-yard line. A good, sure tackle made by Anthony Nunn. Uh, Anthony Nunn's a, a young sophomore, number 96. Watch him come out and, and stop the receiver. A completion by Wilhelm, but watch Anthony Nunn's right there to... He's Anthony on the spot, and you'll see another field goal attempt here by Nielsen. Nielsen, 11 out of 11 in his career in field goal attempts. The holder will be Montagna. Nielsen will kick this one from the 18. Thus, it would be a 28-yard field goal. And so he has one for that distance in this quarter. This one is perfect. 6 nothing Oregon State, thanks to a pair of 28-yard field goals by Jim Nielsen. And we have two minutes left in the first quarter from Parker Stadium in Corvallis, Oregon. Oregon State coach is saying, yeah, we got the lead 6 to nothing, but when you get it first and goal, you should be able to get it in there for a touchdown. We should be leading 14 to nothing. That's probably what Craig Thorpe is thinking right now. On the other side of the field, Jim Sweeney thinking, by golly, our defense did it against UNLV a week ago. So far, they've done it here today at Corvallis. Every break uh, has gone against the Bulldogs so far. And I think if they just keep playing the type of defense that they've been playing, they'll get their offense in high gear and and we'll do all right the rest of the game. Look at that kickoff. Now, under the rules of last year, that ball would have been brought out on the 30. But not so. They went back to the old rule. When the ball sails back of the end line, it's brought out on the 20. Well, that was a bad rule when they put that in because you should not be penalized for excellence. You have someone who can kick the ball clear out of the end zone, you're being penalized an extra 10 yards, which is terrible. Checking over that Fresno State backfield now. Kevin Sweeney at quarterback. Lavelle Thomas and James Williams, the running backs. Stephen Baker comes wide to the left side. Gene Taylor flanked out to the right side. Flug is the tight end. Williams in the middle. Struggles for five, maybe six, depending on where they... Mark his forward progress. Osei Lewis, that linebacker from Tucson, Arizona, again in there on the hit. Lewis has been quite active for the Beavers here in the first quarter. He looked like a quarterback on that play because Williams drags him for five yards after he's hit. So watch this. Lewis gets a good hit on Williams right here as Williams coming off tackle. Williams gets him right here, but now watch Williams drag Lewis for five yards. Good strong runner. Second and four, the ball at the 26. Williams once again. First down, Fresno State. As Williams flips up to the 32. Six-yard pickup again by James Williams, the 5'10", junior from Brunswick, Georgia. Here's another running play. Williams right up the middle. He loses his balance after picking up a first down. It's important when you're going against the wind to exercise ball control. And this is what Jim Sweeney's trying to do now to keep the ball on the ground, use up the clock till they get the wind at their back. Williams from the outside, turns the corner, turns up, and on the 37. Pick up a five more. So James Williams, six yards. Williams, six yards. Now Williams, five yards. The middle linebacker, Schneider, on that play, moved all the way from the middle linebacker position, tackled Williams away out in the flat. It was a very fine defensive play by Schneider. Of course, it was good running by James Williams. And there is James Sweeney. Not much that time. Put down right at the line of scrimmage, the 37 by Rich Haggerty, the sophomore defensive tackle from Gresham, Oregon. You might find Haggerty playing anywhere along the line. He's been usually used as a backup man for, for all three down lineman positions. He might play the nose guard or either tackle. Williams will get a rest now. The new tailback for Fresno State is Kelly Skipper from Eugene, Oregon. He's got a lot of people here in the stands. 
That's the end of the first quarter here at Parker Stadium in Corvallis, Oregon, with a 6 nothing lead for the Beavers over the Bulldogs of Fresno State. We'll be back. On September 28th, Fresno will win. Fresno State trailing 6 nothing, a pair of 28-yard field goals by Jim Nielsen. The difference in this game. But the Bulldogs have made some mistakes, which has boosted Fresno, or rather Oregon State, to that 6 nothing lead. First and 10 now, the ball, check it. It's third down and five, the ball at the 37. Sweeney dumps it off to Kelly Skipper, 40. 45, 50, Kelly Skipper dragged out of bounds around the 43. Michael Lopez, the strong safety. They rule that Skipper touched the sideline marker at the 43. A little one-man screen pass out to Kelly Skipper from Kevin Sweeney. Nice pass. Watch a good move here by Kelly. A good move here. Good block. Good block by Taylor there. Enabled Kelly to pick up an extra 10 or 15 yards. As it is, a 19-yard gain by the Mighty Mike. 5'6", 175. Here comes Spur again. Sheds one tackler. Penalty marker goes down, and so does Kelly Skipper at the 39. But Skipper was going to be thrown for a loss. He was able to shake that tackler and get down to the 39. The hit made by Ose Lewis. We're going to have another costly penalty, I'm afraid, here against the Bulldogs now, and they've been really stopping themselves with these penalties. It looked like to me like there might have been a, an illegal crackback block out in the flank. Oh, the penalty's going to go against the Beavers. I don't. This must have been a face mask. They move the ball down to the 34. Let's check the referee. Yep, the, grabbing the face mask. Uh, that's an unintentional grab. In other words, if you do it incidentally, and you, it's five yards. It's 10 yards if you do it deliberately. Look at that. Yards. Oregon State, a minus two yards rushing in the first quarter. Well, we talked about that Fresno State defense last week in the 26-6 victory over the Rebels. Defense doing the job in the day. Ball is at the 34 of Oregon State. It's Anthony Mosley into the middle. He gets close to the 31. Mosley, a junior from Selma, California, number 37. It's very, I'm sure it's encouraging to Jim Sweeney to, to see his offensive running backs develop. I'm talking about Williams and Skipper and, and uh, Thomas, now Mosley. He's got four cable running backs. The five-yard penalty face mask against the Beavers and the six-yard run by Mosley. First down for the Bulldogs at the 31. Kelly Skipper. And it takes four Beavers. Now he pops up the ball, but I think they're going to blow the whistle. The whistle blew the ball dead. Well, it should have been blown dead because they, they were pushing him back about three yards, and he should get some forward progress. It's Michael Lopez and Gino Mingo that made the first hit on Kelly Skipper. Lopez is always near the ball. He's their strong safety. They use him as a rover back. You might find him anywhere. He's always number 19. He's always near the ball. Very fine defensive back. They'll mark the ball down at the 29, so credit Kelly Skipper uh, with a two-yard pickup. It's second and eight at the 29. Vince Wesson wide left. Mosley and Skipper running back. Out of the shotgun, Kevin Sweeney rifles this one to Kelly Skipper. And Skipper is dropped at the 25. He's going to be about three yards short of a first down. Kelly Skipper just slipped over the middle and cut a, about a four-yard gainer. It's going to be third down and a long three. Lopez and Lewis tackling Kelly Skipper at the 25. Third down and a long three now for Fresno State. Six-nothing Oregon State. We're early in the second quarter. Batted down. The pass batted down by Craig Calloway of Oregon State. He is a freshman. Number 26 coming in on the left side on of the screen. Side. He comes in untouched, gets his arms up, and bats down Kevin's pass. And tend it out in the flat for Kelly Skipper. So now on fourth down, we'll get uh, Belli in there, Barry Belli, with a field goal attempt. 
And the holder for Fresno State will be Brian Carden. Chris Dugan will make the snap. This would be from the 32. Not going to be any good. Wide right. It appeared that Carden was having a little trouble getting that ball down. And Belli had to wait just a fraction of a second. Anyway, the 42-yard field goal attempt is no good, and we still have a 6-0 Oregon State lead early in the second quarter. The last time Oregon State won two games in a row was 1978. They already have a two-game winning streak. The last time Oregon State won two in a row at Parker Stadium was 1977. The last time the Beavers won three in a row, you have to go back to 1970. Right now, the Beavers are on top, 6-0. Wilhelm dumps it off over to Jordan. He's at the 30. Jordan to the 34. Pulled down by George Peterson, an inside linebacker. That'll be a pickup of nine yards for Oregon State. Wilhelm just barely got this ball off. He was, he was rushed hard by Grayson. Grayson had his hand on the shirt. Jordan picks it up, picks up nine yards. going to be second and one. But hold the phone because there was a yellow penalty marker dropped. Illegal procedure against Oregon State. So that'll take the ball back to the 20. And it'll be first and 15. Now I could maybe attribute a lot of those penalties in the opener to the fact that it was the first game last week, but we are having a lot of penalties here today. This is the third game for the Beavers, and uh, they shouldn't be making those penalties, but uh, they're still young 18, 19-year-olds, and they, they make mistakes. Reggie Bynum goes wide to the right side. From the Oregon State 20. And another penalty marker is fluttering to the turf. I would think that this would be also against uh, the Beavers because the defensive man who went across the line did not, Burnett went across, but he did not, I don't think he made contact with the offense. And if he didn't go make contact, he has all day to get back until the ball is snapped. Offside, Fresno State. I'd, I'd like to see that again because I don't think that, uh, that he made contact. Well, it's all academic. To the 25, first down at the Oregon State 25. 6 nothing Oregon State. Dave Craigthorpe, who was an athletic director the last couple of years at Utah State. He spent nine years as a disciple at uh, BYU to Lavelle Edwards, learning all around that uh, BYU pass offense. Wilhelm handing off this time to Malone, and he is deep down by the 28. Senior from Oakland, nailed after a gain of three by Anthony Nunn, the sophomore. There was a flipping penalty that wasn't called there. On no, a lot of things we can't see. Ball is at the 28. 6 nothing Beavers. Eric Wilson, the freshman. He's in the throw. He dropped the ball. Ron Heller, the tight end, was wide open. He must have taken his eye off that ball because the pass was right there. Ron Heller is not a typical tight end. He looks like a, a former fullback. He's, he's not the big, rangy type of tight end. But he's got good speed, and they use him in all different types of... They use him in motion that time. He might have heard footsteps because Bryce Malavese was covering for a fresh touch there. As it is, it's 37 for the Beavers at the 28. Their own 28. <laughs> Wilhelm across the middle. There is Jerry Jordan, and he is dropped at the 30-yard line. A pickup of two. Jerry Jordan. This was a big uh, defensive play that was pulled out. Now they're going to get their hands on the ball again with, with a lot of time left in the second quarter. They're going to have a second quarter. They're going to have a second quarter. The Bulldogs will have the rest of their back and they should be able to move the ball. Julius Awaiting the part of Dan Kenya. Short kick. And it's down at the 47 yard line. It was one out. It was a good kick. It was going to be a good kick. 
And a six yard return by Mark Olson. We have a timeout here at Parker Stadium. Ten and a half minutes still to be played in the first half on this sunshiny Saturday afternoon, September the 21st. The dogs trailing the beaver. Fresno State trailing six to nothing to the Oregon State Beavers. A field goal of 28 yards and another field goal from the same distance by Jim Nielsen. The difference so far. Anthony Mosley, Kelly Skipper in the backfield for Fresno State. Quarterback Kevin Sweeney. Long count by Kevin. He wants to go to Baker. Now, he gets rid of it and throws it out of bounds. Will they call intentional grounding? I think so. Yep. Phil Alfieri applying the pressure on Kevin Sweeney. That'll be a five-yard penalty and loss of a down. Kevin can't find a receiver. He drops back. And number 93 finally gets to him, uh, Alf, Alfieri. And Kevin let go of the ball. It, it was a good call by the official. It was intentionally grounding. There's no receiver within 10 yards of where the ball was, was thrown. Bulldogs continue to stop themselves, play themselves with penalties and with mistakes. They're, they're playing hard and playing very well on occasions. Five yards, loss of a down from the spot of the foul. And it's now back on the 32-yard line of Fresno State. Second down and 23. Mosley can't go anywhere. He is swat under. Alfieri, number 93, on the hit again. And the Beavers are getting roused here in Corvallis. That was a 15-yard penalty, Mike. They put him back there. Here. Okay, here we have Mosley. Uh-oh. Alfieri again. Two big plays in a row for Alfieri. Number 91. Third down coming up for the Bulldogs, Mike. Ball is at the 33 of Fresno State. When you were at Michigan State, did you have any good third and 30 plays? That was used to say, our father who art in heaven. I guess that's the only one. Sweeney gets this one off, completes it to Kelly Skipper at the 39. Jose Lewis running Skipper out of bounds. Mike, uh, James Williams hasn't made an appearance in the ball game here uh, in the last two series. I wonder if he was injured. Here we have Kevin Sports out of the pocket. Hits Kelly Skipper out for a short game, but well short of a first down. And Mike Mancini will be back into punt formation now. And deep for Oregon State, Robert Adams. And a timeout has been called by Mancini. Apparently, they had only 10 men on the field. Well, there's one man in charge of all the special teams, and let's count them. Let's count all the legs here. Mosley was, Mosley was late getting onto the field, and Mancini must have spotted that they had only 10 men in the field. That's the reason he called for the timeout. There would not be a penalty for having 10 men like they had when they had 12. You're allowed to have uh, 10, but you can't have 12. You can have uh, 7 if you want. 7 in the line of scrimmage. You have to have 7 in the line of scrimmage, but... Uh, but I think he's wise to, to, to call time out, though, because it, you don't have much protection with that one, with one fewer man. Mosley was supposed to be the blocker protection for Mancini, and Mike looked up, and Mosley wasn't there. So Robert Adams is still deep, another five yard. No, it's uh, going to be spotted down at the 33. I'm sorry, the ball was at the 33. It'll be fourth and... 30 yards as Mancini will try to punt again. The Bulldogs have done their own worst. <laughs> Mancini gets it away, and it's a booty. Backing up Adams to the nine yard line. Robert Adams. Flug has got him. 
Paul Flew makes the tackle near the 13-yard line. Nine minutes, 19 seconds left in this first half, and it's still Oregon State leading 6-0 over the Bulldogs of Fresno State. Mike Walden and Duffy Doherty. Mike Bryant from TV 26 in Fresno is on the sidelines. And we'll go to him when we have something to pick up from him. So, Mike, any time, if you're listening, if you've got something for us, send it along. All right, the Beavers with the first down at the 13-yard line. Wilhelm wants to go to Bynum. It's deflected. Greg Ramsey, the left end, got his hands on the ball. Second and 10 at the 13. Let's check the stats on Wilhelm. Seven out of 11 for about 62 yards. Like to go to their left. He's completed most of his passes to the left. And that's true of a right hander, too. They'd rather, it's more natural to throw to the right side of the field for a right hander. And Reggie, left hander vice versa. Reggie Bynum is in the slot to the left. Montagna is also wide to the left. Wilhelm, that's oh, intercepted. With the ball for Fresno State, bringing it back to the 23 yard line. Rod Webster. The ball was deflected by another uh, Bulldog defender, then right into Webster's hands. Fine defensive play. Webster, number 19, making that interception. Now let's see if Fresno State can capitalize. An official's timeout now. They're letting an injured player get off the field for the... Beavers. First and ten. The ball is at the 23 of the Bulldogs. The pitch goes to Williams at the 20. Down to the 18. That'll be a pickup of five by the tailback, James Williams. Surprisingly, that's the first time Williams has been in the ball game in this last quarter. The last two offensive appearances for the Bulldogs, Williams was not in there. That time he picked up a good four yards, seven and six now. Well, Rob, Rod Webster gave the Bulldogs great field position with that interception. It's second and five now at the 18 of Oregon State. Beavers lead, six nothing, eight and a half minutes to play. First half. Williams close to the 15. He's going to have third and about uh, yards to go here, Mike. A, a long two, almost three yards, depending on where they spot the ball. They spotted at the 16, so call it third and two at the Oregon State 16. <laughs> so far, it's been a kicking battle with uh, Nielsen kicking a couple of field goals for the Beavers. Belli missing one from 42 yards for Fresno State. LaBelle Thomas, James Williams in the backfield for Kevin Sweeney. See if they move out of the eye. They will. It'll be Williams into the middle. Stop right around the 15-yard line. Jeff Snyder, the middle linebacker, plugged up the gap for Oregon State. No first down for the Bulldogs. But we will get another field goal attempt by Barry Belli out of the hold of Brian Carden. They just haven't been able to capitalize on these opportunities. There's three times they were down in there and, and should have come out at least with uh, three field goals. Now they're, they're after the third time down there. And this, uh, if they get three points, that, uh, that'll help. Chris Dugan to make the snap. Carden will hold Barry Belli from the 22. He's got the distance, and he's got it. A 32-yard field goal by Barry Belli. Cuts that Oregon State lead in half. 6-3, Oregon State. Little over seven minutes left in the second quarter. Dave Craigthorpe of Oregon State is probably kicking himself. And, my golly, we had some opportunities. Had to settle for a couple of field goals. Likewise, Jim Sweeney of Fresno State. They had to settle for a free field goal. So it's 6-3. Oregon State... Late in the second quarter. Uh, I was surprised that Fresno did not put the ball in the air once in those, that series of downs there with, with the first uh, down down on a 15-yard line. Reggie Hawkins and Rob Thomas will be deep. Kick off by Belli. Hawkins will let it go over his shoulder and flip out of the end zone for the automatic touchback. First and 10 now for Oregon State. 
I expected this game to be really quite a fancy passing duel, maybe comparable to the the point scored uh, up here in 1981 when Fresno State had that halftime lead and then finally lost to Oregon State 31 to 28. But so far, battle of field goals. The Beavers with a first down from their 20. Garvin Malone. Stopped after a five-yard gain. George Peterson on the hit. Uh, George made a good tackle, but he threw the ball carrier forward instead of knocking it back toward his own goal line. Sometimes it's difficult to do that unless you get right in front of him. Get, get your shoulder right into him. Second and five at the 25. Dave Montagna comes out uh, wide to the left side. Fresno State's done a pretty good job on Bynum outside of that one long throw for 36 yards. There's the swing out to Marvin Malone, and he stopped at the 26. Cliff Hanneman. Cliff Hanneman has really been playing outstanding uh, football for Fresno State in this first half. You can tell when you're playing good defense. There were about five white-shirted Bulldogs in on that tackle. There was great pursuit by the, all of the interior linemen and the linebackers. That was just a great defensive effort by the entire team on defense. Big down coming up for the Bulldogs. Third and three. They can force them into a punting situation. There's still plenty of time to mount a scoring drive. Robert Adams, wide to the left side. Here comes Bynum in motion. Wilhelm to Adams, and he is leveled by Roar Kelly at the 31, but it's going to be enough for a first down if they mark his forward progress at the 31. There's a flag on the other side of the field. I think it's a personal foul against someone. I don't know whether it's against the the, the Bulldogs. There's two yellow flags went down. There was, there was a little uh, hassle going on on the other side. We did, I didn't see it until the play was all over. It's against Oregon State. That was the preliminary indication from Colin McDermott.
and it wasn't very well thrown. Just under four minutes left, holding Fresno State. Oregon State 6 and Fresno State 3. I understand that we've had some audio problems. We apologize for that. We have three minutes, 56 seconds left in this first half. And there is your score. A pair of field goals by Jim Nielsen for Oregon State, one by Barry Belli, Fresno State. That's all of the scoring that we have had here in the first half, despite a couple of quarterbacks alike to throw, Kevin Sweeney and Eric Wilhelm. Mike Mancini ready to punt. Adams is deep for Oregon State. Mancini's punt will angle into the end zone for the automatic touchback. So the Beavers will have a first down from their 20. Outside of an occasional eight yards or so, or the long, one long pass to Bynum, and the one that's even bigger. We haven't had any spectacular plays in this first half. No, we haven't. Uh, I think the Bulldogs have been uh, almost reluctant to, well, not reluctant to put the ball in the air, but they've cut, uh, caught themselves with, with penalties and, and, and simple mistakes. Wilhelm tosses out of the flats to Bynum. He's out of bounds at the 26. Anthony Dollarhide, but there wasn't much he could do about defending on that play. The little down and out at the sideline. Second and four, Oregon State from their 26. I'm sure the Bulldogs will give Bynum those five or six yarders rather than let him get, take, run a horn on him and get deep. Wilhelm has completed uh, seven passes in 16 attempts here in this first half. This is Darvin Malone up close to a first down near the 30. George Peterson and Cliff Hanneman from the inside of that Fresno State defense put him down. We got first down. First down, Oregon State. Bynum has been held to three passes for 48 yards. And I say hell because coming into this game, he had caught 17 in his first two games for 252 yards and six touchdowns. On first down, Wilhelm. Just as he was unloading, Victor Burnett was unloading on Wilhelm. You can't relax a minute on Bynum, though, because he's the kind of receiver that if you just relax a minute, he's going to burn you for the long one. This number four, Eric Wilhelm from Portland, is a tough kid. He was a championship wrestler at 191 pounds in high school, so he's used to the rough and tough play. Second and ten from the Oregon State 30. Pass dropped by the tight end, Heller. That was no fault of Eric Wilhelm's. Heller was open. Uh, Wilhelm puts a lot of tone on the ball. He throws, he throws the ball hard, and it just went right through Heller's fingers. When I said he doesn't look like a tight end, he looks more like the, the Christensen, the Raider type of tight end. Maybe it, uh, he came from Brigham Young, and so did, so did uh, Craig Thorpe. Dave Craig Thorpe, uh, an assistant coach in BYU for some nine years. He also was a head coach for one year at South Dakota State, three years at Idaho State. Holding penalty against Oregon State will move the ball back to the 20. And if my calculations are correct, that is 13 penalties so far here in the first half, and we still have over three minutes to go. I said last week we'll never have a game with 33 penalties. So this quarter is Again. reminiscent to the third quarter we had last, last week's game. That, that quarter lasted forever. Second and 20. Wilhelm's got 20 yards to go for a first down, but he's going to be sacked. The hit made by Ramsey, Greg Ramsey, a junior from Kalinga, number 87. I would have to say that the Bulldog defense has been more effective than their Bulldog offense so far in this first half. They have played just an outstanding game, and we expected going into this game that both teams would move the ball rather freely, but neither team has had any consistency on offense. 
If somebody would have told you that with two and a half minutes left in the first half, we'd have only nine points scored, I wouldn't have believed you going in. That's the way it is. 6-3, Oregon State. Wilhelm gets away from Victor Burnett, comes up and rifles it to Montaigne, out of bounds, just across the 30. Rourke Kelly making the tackle, but Montaigne just did get across the 30. Very close to the first down. I guess he didn't get it. No, he was... Uh, That's right. They needed another 10. Another That's 10 right. yards. Forgot about the penalty. All well, right. The Bulldogs will get another 2 minutes, 24 seconds. That's a... Uh, plenty of time. With, I think they have a couple timeouts left. Julius Pitts will be back deep, awaiting the punt of Glenn Pena. The Bulldogs do have two timeouts left. Pitts will take this at the 32. Retreats to the 30, back up to the 45. 50 into Oregon State territory at the 46 of the Beavers. What you try to do on a punt return is form a wall outside of all the onrushing coverage. And the Bulldogs did an excellent job. There was just one block from going all the way on that play. And yeah. Jeff Snyder making the tackle. The ball will be placed down at the 46. That was a 38-yard punt and a 20-yard return. To the sidelines and Mike Brent. Well, let me tell you, Mike, at this point, it, it, uh, it seems that Kevin is throwing short passes even when he's had the opportunity to throw long. And we check with trainers, uh, ending any speculation he might be injured in any way. He's fine. It's just not the game plan right now. First and 10 at the Oregon State 46. Sweeney, did he complete it? Flew going for the ball, but he couldn't hold on. Flew the tight end. Second and 10 at the 46. That was another short pass, so that would have been about a six yard gain had it been completed. Uh, maybe the uh, fact that the secondary is playing so deep. You watch this, how deep the, the, the two safety men are back here. They're 15 yards deep. But that's probably preventing the Bulldogs from attempting to go long. Out of the shotgun this time. Sweeney completes this one to the 24-yard line. Stephen Baker making the grab. This is a little curl, a little turn in by Baker. And he puts the, the zone. The zone, they're going, the coverage is going very deep. Baker right in front of the safety man. Turns in and catches the ball. Nice completion for the Bulldogs. And it's a first down for Fresno State at the 24 of Oregon State. We have just under two minutes left in this second quarter. Kevin Sweeney wants to go to Baker again. Baker was open for just a moment. Now Kevin will run it out of bounds, being assisted out of bounds by Jose Lewis. Well, Kevin picked up three yards, and that's better than being sacked back there for eight or nine yards. Take off. The, the, watch here, the protection breaks down a little bit. Kevin finds a hole up inside, and he steps out of bounds, gets knocked out of bounds a little bit. Hit by Lewis there, number seven. One quarterback hitting another, and next quarterback hitting the present quarterback. 143 left in the first half, 6 3, Oregon State leading. But the Bulldogs, you figured, could at least get a field goal from this point. Lavelle Thomas trying to get outside. And he's going to be about a yard shy of a first down near the 15-yard line. It's it was to... Scott Munson who ran him out of bounds. Yes, yeah, Scott Munson did a good job, but uh, that was a fine run by Lavelle Thomas. He showed, he showed surprising speed here. I didn't know he had that kind of speed. Watch this handoff to Lavelle Thomas. He set sail around the end. It'll depend on the spot here now. He goes out of bounds right close to the flag. Watch here. He's about a half a yard short, I would say. And you would say correctly, because it's third and less than a yard as Jim Sweeney hopes to go off the field no worse than a tie at halftime, maybe even with the lead. On third and short yardage, Sweeney, no good to Taylor. Gene Taylor. Taylor, the flanker back. I, I don't think we'll see a field goal attempt here at this time. I, yes, they are. They're going to take a field goal. I, uh, third and a half yard. And you can't still. say that that wasn't a good, that was a good call. If it works, it's a touchdown. And, in fact, uh, until I was watching the game on TV today, and Boston College had third and one on the 29, less than two minutes ago, and they're behind 22-21. They went for it. Then with, with uh, third, fourth and one, rather, on the 39, they faked a plunge and hit a pass, went all the way for a touchdown, won the game. 
So that was a good call. A timeout has been called. Fresno State will call a timeout. Now they have less than a yard to go for the first down. The ball is just outside the 15 of Oregon State. Well, they had to call a timeout there because they only had 10 men on the field again. They're having a lot of trouble with their special teams getting the right number of men, 11. And they've had 12 on one occasion, which, <laughs> occasion which cost them, uh, gave up a field goal at the end of that drive. Craig Thorpe, the Oregon State coach in the dark shirt, beige pants. You've always been talking about the holder being the next quarterback here. And uh, Carden. Brian Carden? Yeah, Carden. And uh, about the time when they're going to fake the field goal and throw the ball? I don't think this is the time. Barry Belli will line up from the far hash mark. So he'll have an angle from left to right. He missed one of 40 two yards earlier in the game when Carden had difficulty getting the ball down properly. This would be from the 23. It is good, and we've got a tie game here in Corvallis, Oregon. So far, Jim Nielsen, two field goals. Barry Belli, two field goals. And that equals a 6-6 tie with a minute and 29 seconds left in the first half. There's Paul Schechter. Bottom of your screen there, the Fresno State trainer. Next week, the Bulldogs of Fresno State will be at home. Bulldog Stadium against Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Kickoff time, 7 o'clock. And two weeks from today, again, the Bulldogs will be at home against the University of Hawaii. And on October the 12th, San Jose State. That will be a 7 o'clock kickoff. So after this game, the Bulldogs will be home for three straight games in Fresno. Well, I think once they get on track offensively, they're going to have an outstanding football team. The defense is starting to gel, and you figure that they're playing without two of their fine defensive players. Uh, that's Pacheco and Mason. And they're still stopping the Beaver attack. Reggie Hawkins will see this one sail about 15 yards beyond the end line. Wow. There's a little bit of a breeze at the back of Barry Belli, but he really got his foot into that one. So Belli with a field goal of 32 yards, tying the game at six. But I'm surprised we haven't had a touchdown in this first half. But I think that man is, too. And the man across the way, David Pigthorpe, must feel the same way. Well, they're both fine offensive coaches, and I think they both like to put the ball in the air, which they, uh, well, of course, the Beavers have, and I think they'll continue to put, even though they're back on their own 20-yard line, they're, they're going to throw. That's to Reggie Bynum. Wilhelm hitting Bynum, who steps out of bounds. That'll stop the clock with 125 left in the first half. Uh, this is just a, an out pattern, and with a short time left in the half, the defensive backs must play a little looser and go back and not give them long bomb. So they took the nine-yard gain as down and out with Bynum. Second and one at the 29. Darvin Malone and Jerry Jordan, the running backs for Eric Wilhelm. Jordan. Jordan is going to be pulled down for a loss at the 27. George Peterson, a senior linebacker from Fresno, made the tackle. Peterson at 6'2 and 225. That's a good play for the for the Bulldogs, too, because it's using up a lot of time. That play is using about 30 seconds, and, and I don't understand. The Beavers have three timeouts left, but they haven't utilized any of them yet. They're going to let the clock run out. On third and three, Wilhelm across the middle, no good. I don't know who he was going to. Nothing but a sea of uh, four white-shirted Fresno State players. Now they're going to have to give the ball up with 53 seconds to go, and the, and the Bulldogs have... Have one timeout left. They had to use one when they only had 10 men in the field for that field goal try. Eric Wilhelm has hit on 11 out of 20, as you see that much time left in this half. Wilhelm, 11 out of 20 for 97 yards, one interception. And let's get the stats on Kevin Sweeney as well. Pena almost had it blocked by Michael Stewart. Penalty marker goes down. They may call Stewart for making contact with Pena. If it is, it's a tough break for Fresno State, and I say that because Stewart came within an eyelash, and if he did make contact, it was incidental. Let me tell you, though, Mike, uh, you never, it always looks like to almost block it. You never block 
a punt by coming across the side. You got to get in front of the kicker and work up on the kicker kicking toe. You don't block a kick coming from the side like this. Watch it. Oh, I did watch it. I didn't. Well, he came. The shirt came from the side. Now, if he had got on the kicker's toe and worked up on his toe, he'd have blocked the kick. Oh, we have offsetting penalties. They will probably do it all over again. Here it is again. All right, now watch it. He, Stewart comes from the side. Now we couldn't we see it. We couldn't see it again. But it doesn't make any difference because offsetting penalty. So we'll do it all over. It'll bring the ball back to the 27. I gave you the stats on Eric Wilhelm. Now on Kevin Sweeney, he is 6 out of 12, 96 yards. They're rather equal as far as the stats, except Kevin hasn't thrown an interception. Julius Pitts at the 42. Waiting the punt of Glenn Pena. Snap is made by Matt Stone. Pena gets this one away. Fair catch signal for by Pitts at the 43. So with 37 seconds left, it is conceivable with the strong right arm of Kevin Sweeney, the Bulldogs could get down in scoring position even though we have 37 ticks of the clock left in this first half. One 30-yard pass and they'll be in Bell Eye's uh, field goal range. Mosley and Williams are the running backs for Kevin Sweeney. First and ten Bulldogs from their 43. A 6-6 six, six tie here at Parker Stadium. Closing seconds of the first half. He was throwing for Mosley, a little bit high. Mosley coming out of the backfield couldn't hold on. Well, Kevin did throw the ball off there. Now another holding penalty on the... Another 10-yard holding penalty against the... Bulldogs. How many penalties have we had in this first half? I lost track at about 14. Well, here's another one. And it goes back to the 33, holding against the Bulldogs. I think you might see them run a draw play here now and try to run the clock, get off the field with a 6 6 time, and regroup for the second half. Mosley and Williams in the backfield. Kevin has time going long and deep for Stephen Baker. Baker may have been interfered with. He was. He was. Scott Monson bumped Baker as he was making his cut to grab the ball near the 25 or 26 yard line. It, it was definitely interference. I think it was done unintentionally, but it was a was interference. You watch Baker going down the sideline, and you'll see Munson bump him just before the ball gets there. There comes Baker. There, there you saw, right there, you saw Munson bump him and come down. Now, in the last year, or two years ago, the rule would have been first down from the spot of the foul against the defense. But, but this year, it's only a 15-yard penalty. They're not applying the penalty, though. Right? Yes, they are. Here's the 15-yard walk-off. Penalty, that's right. But as I say, under the old rule, it would have been a first down at that spot. That's right. That's a severe penalty, though. This rule's better, I think, even though right now it would help the Bulldogs more than the old rules. A 6-6 six, six high, 23 seconds left in this first half. Ball is at the 49. The 49 of the Bulldogs. Sweeney looking again for Baker. Now he's going for Taylor over in the corner. Taylor! can't get it and a penalty marker dropped again <laughs> Levance Northington covering Taylor Northington interfered with Taylor that'll be another 15 yard penalty that puts him in field goal range if they get that 15 yard penalty it'll put him in Bill I still on field goal range now watch number two Lentz if Northington right there he did hit him he hit him right there Levance Northington he tripped him with his foot he already has three interceptions this year, but he was playing his man and not the ball. They should face off a 15 yard penalty here now. Wonder what Kevin is holding his right shoulder about. Well, he threw that ball long enough. Oregon State now has been penalized eight times for 85 yards in this first half. 14 seconds to go, one timeout left, so they can afford to, to try to throw a hook pass or something in there and call a timeout and kick a field goal. Taylor to the right side. Baker to the left. 
Kevin Sweeney. He's got his man, Anthony Mosley. Mosley out of bounds at the 26 with seven seconds left. And that should be in the range of Barry Belli for a field goal attempt. Jamie Norman running him out of bounds. That was a very nice pass by Kevin Sweeney out to Mosley. Mosley did a good job of getting out of bounds. Picked it up five or six yards before he did, though. This would be a 43-yard field goal by Barry Belli. Harden will hold. He's got the wind at his back. This is well within the range. He could kick it 10 yards or 15 yards further than this with this wind. The longest field goal for Barry Belli was 50 yards versus Hawaii last year. This one is up. It's got the distance. It looks good. It is good. Barry Belli gives Fresno State the lead. 9-6 with two seconds left in the first half. Well, I'll tell you that this should give the, the Bulldogs a great lift going into the locker room. Usually the team that scores right before the half has a great psychological lift. They, it gives them the momentum ordinarily carrying into the third quarter. And uh, I'm sure that uh, Sweeney will have some few, a few choice, choice words for his offensive unit for all the mistakes that they've made in this first half, but they have done some good things. The line score so far in this first half, Barry Belli 3, Jim Nielsen 2. <laughs> That's right. Three field goals by Belli, two by Nielsen. And still no touchdowns in this first half. It's, uh, you're going to bring out a baseball parlance. It's a kicker's battle, huh? I guess. Not a pitcher's battle. So when far it, it has been. When the quarterbacks connect, we'll call it a pitcher's battle. Two seconds left in this first half. Mike Walden, Duffy Doherty, Mike Bryant is down on the sidelines. And Barry Belli, who has kicked three of them today, including that last one of 43 yards, will kick off. I would almost scrub this and keep the ball in the field to play so the clock would run out. Not a bad idea. If you kick it out of the end zone, they get a chance for one play. Clock doesn't start till the ball is touched. They are kicking deep. Hawkins sees the ball sail beyond the end line, so Oregon State will have perhaps one last play. They have two, yeah, they have two, uh, two seconds left to go in a the half. Their timeouts that they've saved won't do them any good. They have three timeouts remaining and haven't used any of them. And you can't carry them over to the second half, unfortunately. Eric Wilhelm will have a first down from the 20. Perhaps he'll be able to get off one play. Adam swing out at split in. Looks like they're just... He's just going to fall down with the ball, and that's a quarterback sneak for a couple of yards, and that's it. So after the end of the first half from Parker Stadium in Corvallis, Oregon, it's a 9-6 lead for the Bulldogs of Fresno State over Oregon State. Three field goals by Barry Belli and two by Jim Nielsen. Well, I, uh, I think that the fans of Fresno State should be even more encouraged than ever over this Bulldog football team. I'm sure everyone's disappointed that the offense hasn't really exploded and scored several touchdowns this first half, but the defense has played magnificently, and the offense has shown flashes of being explosive, and I think once it starts gelling, and offensive football takes a long, a long time to develop when you're trying to incorporate a running game, and I think in the long run, the fact that they are running the ball a lot will stand them in such good stead when they start playing those, uh, the tough teams that they have in the future schedule. At intermission, there's your score. The Bulldogs up by three over Oregon State from the Pac-10. James Williams, 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighs 205 pounds, and comes from Brunswick, Georgia. The junior tailback raised eyebrows last week in the FSU victory over UNLV, gaining 156 yards and scoring two touchdowns in the first Bulldog ground game win in three years. So who is this guy? This guy, James Williams, is, is a Georgia peach. Came from a law, little old school way down in Georgia, and he came... Uh, to play at Taft, and Al Baldock does a tremendous job of recruiting Texas, Georgia, the southern communities for the small town kid who hasn't been discovered. And one of the reasons that you don't hear a lot about James is that he played half time down there. And we tried to recruit another guy, Alonzo Clark, who was more speed than him. We tried to recruit another guy at that same Taft Junior College, all three of whom were great backs, but a lot of people thought James was the third best. 
Coach Jim Sweeney may have been looking at others when he found Williams, but nobody's more satisfied with this latest recruiting coup than the head dog. His impact is yet to be felt, really. One game doesn't make him Herschel Walker. Uh, one game makes him be what his coach, his head coach, uh, promoted him to be. He can be the best back Fresno State University has ever had as a running back. Uh, and there isn't any back that we have ever had here who has his speed, size, and strength, ability to see the field. He can run inside, run outside, and he can catch the ball. I mean, he is a great, outstanding future prospect. He's got to prove it every week. James is a genuinely happy guy, and why not? A new school, exciting things happening each day, and an impressive debut on the field. Well, they say the main goal this year in the spring, when I came in the spring, was to establish a running game. And they say that they was going to run me. I didn't know how many times they were going to run me. So I was very, very, you know, pleased that they ran me a lot. Off the field, James is majoring in recreation. And not unlike most students, you have your favorite classes, and then you have the others. Uh, what's the worst class here? <laughs> Psychology. <laughs> We don't want you to name the teacher, but uh, <laughs> what's wrong with that class? Well, it's boring. This is lecture all day. <laughs> it's just very, very boring. The relationship between the coaches and the athlete is one of mutual appreciation. He's grateful for what the other has to offer. Uh, I think they're very, very intelligent coaches. And I think they know what's, go you know, know what's going on. Did you do a right, Coach Sweeney imitation? <laughs> no, I Come on, that. just a little bit. No, no, no. What's some of the things you can do? Turn your back into a butt moving. <laughs> uh, James Williams did a pretty good Coach Sweeney impression. Do you do a James Williams? <laughs> I don't know whether I do a James Williams. I'd like to be able to have James Williams' future ahead of me. If I did, my grandbabies would be looking at what is going to be a rich granddaddy because James Williams has the tools to, to play this game on a level beyond college. And Instant stardom will sometimes hurt an athlete, but James is realistic. My head is still in the game, and I'm just hoping that you know, I can stay healthy the whole season and I can get the job done. And that's Bulldog Spotlight for this week. When we come back in just a couple of minutes, the facilities at Fresno State, Bulldog Stadium, and lots more when we come back. I'm Show. Sure. Bulldog Stadium, all 30,000 seats paid for by the community in and around Fresno. Now, not too many colleges in this state or across the country can say the same thing. Community support has been a key part of Fresno State's growth. When looking at the Fresno State campus, it doesn't take long for your eye to catch on the newest additions, including 3,500-seat Biden Field, one of the finest baseball stadiums on the West Coast, at a price tag reading $2.5 million. Now, no one will argue the value of big-time facilities promotes the program and the university. It's the community support behind Bulldog Athletics that's so unique. Football coach Jim Sweeney remembers how it began. In 1976, when we came here, we called Fresno State a sleeping giant. Uh, basically built on the premise that there was the San Joaquin Valley area, which was unproliferated by competition from another sports, uh, uh, e either from uh, a sport of pro football or a sport of college football in the major Division I status. So we had the opportunity to, to get a, a captive audience. I, I believe the 76 football team began building that cornerstone the 77 team built it so it changed the image of fresno the area of fresno from maybe a one horse college to a university system nearly 15 million dollars have been spent in the last six years 7.5 million for the stadium alone and most of that came from valley supporters now, some of the not-so-evident changes include landscaping, parking lots, lawn areas, buildings you may take for granted. But it took lots of cash just to put up the Bulldog ticket office, the shower locker room facility. And, yes, building continues not so exciting, but nonetheless necessary, are restrooms. Fresno State now has a new weight room featuring full-time services of a weight and conditioning coach. Out at Warmer Dam Field, there have been improvements and upgrading. And the women's softball complex also ranks near the top of the list of West Coast stadiums. All of these signs of growth and change mean one thing to Jim Sweeney. What that has done, it, it allows the local prospect to look in a mirror and see 
his reflection coming back is very strong because he has the ability to stay home, play in this kind of a facility, play in front of 30 and one day hopefully 50,000 people so he doesn't have to go to SC or he doesn't have to go someplace else to realize his childhood dreams of, of playing in that type of a, of a setting. So it has helped us tremendously. It also has helped the community see themselves as being much stronger and, and better in their image. And uh, the growth is almost frightening. The sleeping giant is truly awakened. There has been one more building constructed just this week, but not on the Fresno State campus. Bulldog mascot Time Out has been living in this shed atop a billboard, waiting for the return of CB, Cowl Bold. Coach Sweeney's gift from KMJ Radio disappeared during halftime of the FSU UNLV game. How's it going so far, Time Out? Okay? No word yet on CB, huh? The station is asking for all information as to the whereabouts of the little English bulldog, and I understand a healthy reward is being offered. But in the meantime, Time Out will stay put, high above Blackstone and Shaw, waiting for CB. Well, that's just about going to do it for this week's halftime extravaganza. Quick thanks to Irene C. Hill for the use of her chair here at Bulldog Stadium. I'm Mike Bryant, and in just a moment, Mike Walden and Duffy Doherty will bring us first half stats, and then we'll have the second half of the FSU-OSU game live from Corvallis, Oregon. This is Mike Walden along with Duffy Doherty at halftime here at Corvallis Parker Stadium. 9-6 lead Fresno State over Oregon State. And so far, neither team's offense has been able to get on track. No, I think it'll, largely because of penalties. I think both teams have stopped themselves offensively. However, I think the Bulldog defense has played so aggressively that they've put a lot of pressure on Bynum. They've been double covering him and triple covering him. And they've, they've rushed the Wilhelm, the quarterback, uh, quite a bit, too. So I think that you have to give the Bulldog defense tremendous credit. The, by inversely, the Bulldog offense has been sporadic and it's uh, carrying out no consistency at all. Of course, they've had holding penalties repeatedly and they've had uh, an intentional grounding and forward pass. And uh, it's, it, it, I think that once they get unglued and untracked, if the defense defense continues to, to give them a great field position they did the first half, I think that uh, you'll see a different Bulldog team. As you look at the halftime statistics, you'll be able to see that both teams are about even in total yards. 154 for Fresno State and Oregon State 104, so there's a difference of 50 yards there. But look at the penalties. A total of 16 penalties, and we're right on course, having about the same number as uh, last week against UNLV. Well, I think right at the end, there were three or two pass interference penalties right in a row against uh, the Beavers, which enabled uh, Fresno State to get the go-ahead field goal. And then I think penalties that uh, the Bulldogs got by only having once by having it, which is a very costly one, they got caught with 12 men in the field. Now, uh, it's been enough to get caught with 10 men in the field, but I think they're going to have to have the, the offensive coordinator before they send these special teams in to count all their legs and divide by two. That way, they, <laughs> that way they'll be sure that they'll always have the right number of men on there. Let's take a look at the individual stats now in rushing. Uh, James Williams has 42 yards and 12 carries. Malone is the top rusher for Oregon State, 20 yards and 8 carries. In passing, Wilhelm of Oregon State is 11 out of 21, but one was intercepted. That one was by Rod Webster. Yeah, that was a great play. Webster, uh, it was batted in the ball by, by another by a linebacker. I think it was Grayson, and then Webster picked it up. Webster's played very well defensively in the first half. Well, also, uh, Hanneman has played well. Number 77, the roverback for Fresno State, and I like the play of Ramsey, number 87 as well. Well, the uh, the three down linemen have been very aggressive, and that gives the, the linebackers, the four linebackers, the concept of the Fresno defense is to play three down linemen, have four linebackers who move laterally along mm -hmm. behind the line of scrimmage, and they've made just a host of tackles. And you have to remember that Chris Pacheco is out, so is Kevin Mason. They're out with uh, sprained ankles. Ankles probably will be back for Cal Poly San Luis Obispo next Saturday at Bulldog Stadium. Well, you know, Mike, football is called, talking about injuries, football has been called mistakenly a contact sport for many years. Football is not a contact sport. Dancing used to be a contact sport, but football is a collision sport. And I think we've had a, in football you have those, you know, bodily, con, bodily collisions, right? And it's wonder there aren't more people hurt. <laughs> and so easy, and I know how 
Badly Pacheco and Masonfield sitting back in Fresno, but they're elated at least that the Bulldogs are leading. Yes, that's absolutely right. Uh, also, uh, let's take a look at Kevin Sweeney's stats. He's 6 out of 14 for 108 yards, but no interceptions. No, and also there were several times when the protection broke down and Kevin had to get rid of the ball. You know, that you've got to do that. You have to deliberately ground the ball or throw it high so that because your receivers aren't open rather than risk an interception. Kevin's a smart quarterback, and I think he's going to start going downfield with the ball a little bit more. They've been trying to throw short, but but in the first half, the Beaver sec secondary was so deep. Uh, when the, once the play would unfold, they would be the safety would be 30 yards deep. And I think you're going to find that Sweeney will have his receivers run deep drags, maybe 18 or 20 yards deep in front of those safety men, and then I think they can hit them repeatedly if they do that. Reggie Bynum has been pretty well contained by Fresno State. I see that Bynum has caught, uh, let's see, He's caught four for 56 yards, but he's also dropped a couple. Yes, well, he's been harassed <laughs> great well. He's, he's had two men on him in every pass play. See, uh, Fresno State's gone to sometimes five, six defensive backs. Yes, uh, Jim calls his nickel defense when he has five, takes out one linebacker and, and has uh, has five defensive backs. Then when he puts in a six defensive back, he takes out one of the down linemen. Then he has five linebackers and, and, uh, and four defensive backs also there. So he has, he has two down linemen and five linebackers and, uh, and four defensive backs. So it's, a, it's really, he calls it a dime defense. So far, it's three field goals by Barry Belli and two by Jim Nielsen. Our halftime score, Fresno State 9, Oregon State 6. Stay with us for the second half from Corvallis. Toyota dealer. Drive the number one selling small truck in America. Drive a Toyota. And by Coors, a beer with a difference. The Bulldogs huddled around Jim Sweeney, leading 9-6 to six as we get ready to start play here in the second half. Next week, it'll be Cal Poly San Luis Obispo against Fresno State, a 7 o'clock kickoff at Bulldog Stadium. Dave Craigthorpe's team has not been able to score a touchdown, but on the other hand, nor has Jim Sweeney's club. Three field goals by Barry Belli and two by Jim Nielsen, and that's been it in scoring here on this sunshiny afternoon in Corvallis. Kickoff time was a little after 4 o'clock, and the shadows are about 60 to 70 percent over the field, which, by the way, is not natural turf. It's a form of uh, astral turf. It's been down for a year now, but it's a very spongy, cushiony type field. Well, they put they put deeper uh, cushioning underneath now. They have sort of a foam rubber in underneath it that makes it feel very soft to run on. Wisconsin beat UNLV today, 26 to 23. So a good effort by the Rebels back in Madison, Wisconsin, against Big Ten foe the Wisconsin Badgers. Well, the Pacific Coast Conference is a tough conference. It's a good conference. It doesn't get the recognition that it deserves nationwide. I suppose because the teams are in the West Coast, they don't get the Eastern publicity and back in the Midwest in the Sunday papers. We've got to do something about that football blowing off the tee. Barry Belli ready to kick off if the ball will hold. Reggie Hawkins, Rob Thomas, deep for Oregon State. Second half underway, Mike Walden and Duffy Doherty. Automatic touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 20, and Oregon State will put it in play. On the backfield for Oregon State, you're going to have Eric Wilhelm, the freshman quarterback from Lake Oswego in the Portland area, and he'll be backed up in the backfield by Darvin Malone and Jerry Jordan or Carl Lane, and I see it's going to be Carl Lane in place of Jordan at tailback for Oregon State. Ron Heller will be the tight end, Robert Adams the split end, and the flanker back, Reggie Bynum, who caught five balls in the first half, and he's averaging eight catches per game, and he scored six touchdowns. But he hasn't scored one yet in this game. 9-6, Fresno State, first play of the second half. Heller in motion. First time we've seen Heller in motion. On the delay, here comes Tyler Lane. Big hole, 30, 40. Fumbles the ball, recovered by Fresno State. The Bulldogs come up with it at the 37. Byron Nichols made the hit, and Roar Kelly recovers the ball for the Bulldogs. Well, this was a, a great play by Lane, a good run. He's got good speed, number 23 Lane. He gets hit by Roar Kelly up here. They ruled it no fumble. It looked like a fumble to me right here. One official pointed that it was Fresno State's ball. 
yet, but he was overruled. He said he was down before he let loose of it. A 38-yard run by Lane. Oregon State will hold on at the Bulldogs, 42. 9-6, Fresno State. Bynum in motion. Wilhelm goes to Montagna, down at the 39. Well, that was a quick pass out in the flat to Montagna that picked up about three yards. You're going to have a, actually about two and a half yards. You're going to have about two and a long seven to go here. In second down and long seven. On that fumble recovered by Kelly, one official signaled that it was Fresno State's ball. He did. He was right on the plate, too. He was the back judge. Oregon State with a second and seven at the 39, 9-6, Fresno State. Early in the third quarter, on the delay, Lane is pulled down. The tackle made by Mark Olson. Now a big, big play coming up for the Bulldogs. Now third down and seven. No gain in that play. Third down and seven. They're still against that win. The Beavers are not in field goal range, so they'll have to punt if they don't make the first down here. I, they don't have to punt. You don't have to punt even from your own 10-yard line, but they probably will punt. Montagna is wide right. Bynum lines up in the backfield. He'll probably go in motion. There he goes. From the 41 of Fresno State, Wilhelm to Bynum. Couldn't hold on. Bynum again drew a crowd as the ball went in his territory. Roy Kelly and Greg Williamson hounding Bynum on the pass play. Uh, anytime you see Bynum, you find Greg Williamson is not very far behind. It's almost like a box and one in basketball, the defense that is played. So Bynum draws a crowd, one man assigned to him, and some others help out. Julius Pitts will be back to receive the hunt from Glenn Pena to start to... Uh, in this series for Oregon State. Out of bounds at the four. Pena booted it out of bounds between the four and the five yard line. So now the Bulldogs are going to have to go almost 96 yards to get a score. But neither team has been able to score yet in this game. It's been a battle of field goals. Barry Belli with three, Jim Nielsen with two. Nine, six, Fresno State over Oregon State. 37-yard punt by Pena. That was a great punt to kick it out of bounds in the four-yard line. Now the Bulldogs need a, a big play here to get them out from the shadows of their own goal. Back of Kevin Sweeney will be Lavelle Thomas and James Williams. From the four. Sweeney going long and deep for Stephen Baker. Baker's got the ball at the 40. It'll be a 96-yard <laughs> touchdown play. Kevin Sweeney to Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker. No, no flags, no flags. Oh, you talk about the bomb. We've nope. been waiting a game and a half for that. We've been talking about having Kevin go downfield. He's got a strong arm. That was a great pass and a great reset. Let's take another look at it. Baker, number 81, he runs a, a fly pattern, a streak pattern. He goes straight down the field. He just outruns the cornerback. A perfectly thrown pass. The defensive halfback fell down. Wouldn't have made any difference because he was Baker was beyond him anyway. 96 yards, the most spectacular bulldog play of the year. Stephen Baker from Hamilton High School in Los Angeles, a transfer from West Los Angeles Junior College. Harden will hold. Belli will try to attack on the extra point. Drills it right through the middle. And the Bulldogs, thanks to that 96-yard touchdown play, lead Oregon State 16-6 in the first two minutes of the third quarter from Corvallis, Oregon. Silence settles over this crowd of about 25,000 here at Parker Stadium following the bomb. 96 yards, Sweeney to Stephen Baker. The kickoff by Bill I. It'll hit at the five yard line and flip out of bounds. In all probability, Bill I will be forced to kick over, but this time with the five yard penalty. That's the 38th career touchdown pass for number nine, Kevin Sweeney. In a little over two seasons at Fresno State, 38 touchdown passes. I dare say that's the longest one, too. I, I would uh, hazard a guess. I've got Dave Walden checking the book. We'll get Scott Johnson. He'll have that information for us, the sports information director at Fresno State. It's 
So now Barry Belli will kick off from the 35. The man of the hour, number nine, Kevin Sweeney, the junior quarterback. Boy, did he want up and heave that ball. Let's see, where, how long, how far did that ball travel in the air? Oh, I would say a good 55 yards. Yep, I think that's about right. It seems to me that Baker took the ball at about the 30 or maybe the 35. Well, I'm sure we're going to see that play once or twice more before this telecast is over. I think we will. You know, Kevin's been hampered all week long in practice with a Charlie horse with a bruised thigh and hasn't been able to run at full speed. He's a tough youngster. And he, he can play with pain. Belli's kickoff over Hawkins' shoulder. Six yards deep in the end zone. Automatic touchback. The Oregon State Beavers, down by 10 now, will have a first down from their 20. Okay, for Oregon State, Eric Wilhelm at quarterback. And let's see if that long bomb kind of primes the pump. We didn't have a, a great deal of spectacular plays in the first half. Maybe we'll have it in the second half on both sides. Here's, Here's a touchdown again. Here's a 96-yard pass. Kevin, let's watch where it's caught here now. Kevin unwinds and heaves the ball downfield. It's caught on the 39-yard line. So he had to go about 55 yards for touchdown. Back to live action here. Eric Wilhelm completes it to Bynum. I see he's got a new T-shirt on now. He's lost part of his uniform. Just enough to make out the number 80. As Byron long, Nichols made the tackle. As long as you can make out the number, he can wear that uniform. If they, if you, if they tear the number up, they've got to take him out of the ball game and change jerseys. Or else take a timeout. That's a pickup of 14 on the pass play. Wilhelm to Bynum. A first down at the 34. This one goes to Bynum again on the opposite side, and he's pulled out by Byron Nichols. So now all of a sudden, Fresno State opens up the scoring, and the Oregon State Beavers unleash their Air Express. Favored the, the pilot and co-pilot, Eric Wilhelm and Reggie Bynum. You can't sit on a 10-point lead. I'm not that the Bulldogs are sitting on it, but you've got to still play aggressively on defense and and try to control the, the line of scrimmage. The first pass went to Bynum for 14 yards. This one for 13. First down, Oregon State at the 47 as you look at Reggie Bynum. Wilhelm across the middle. It's Bynum again. Bynum to the 30-yard line of Fresno State. A pickup of 23 more yards. First it's 14 yards, then 13, and now 23. It's just amazing. As we talked about what a great receiver behind him is. He runs a curl back to the inside. He's wide open. He, he left his defender behind him. Then he sets up field. He's, he's got quick speed, very deceptive speed. He just glides along, and he's six foot three, 195 pounds. He's an excellent runner after he catches the ball. Tackle was made by Rod Webster, who has intercepted one of Wilhelm's passes. Eric will try again. Swings it out to Montagna, and he's bumped out of bounds at the 25. Wilhelm has now completed 16 of 27 for 110 yards. Byron Nichols running him out of bounds. It'll be second and five at the Fresno State 25. Isn't it funny how many times have you seen this, Duffy Doherty? Game goes along, field goal here, field goal there, nothing much happening, and all of a sudden, boom. And now Oregon State coming back, completing three straight passes to Reggie Bynum. They got the crowd back in the game now, too. Bynum coming this way. It's number 22, Jerry Jordan, and he is popped at the 22. Jordan gains about three. Tackle is made by Anthony Nunn. Anthony Nunn, a young sophomore, starting his first game for the Bulldogs, replacing Mason, who's injured. And he's come up with some several great plays today. He's very, he's inexperienced, but he's got size and he's got quickness and speed. And he's going to be an outstanding linebacker before he's through. The ball is at the 27. It's third and seven now for Oregon State. Wilhelm retreats about 10 yards. It's batted down. Greg Ramsey at 6'4", a 230-pound junior from Colinga, batting the ball down. Watch Greg Ramsey leap high in the air and, and bat the ball, get his hand on the ball. That's a big third down play. We'll see a field goal attempt here now by, the, by Nielsen. He's already kicked two. He's going after his third one today. His longest 49 yards against Arizona State last year. This one would be from the 34-yard line, thus he's in his range. A 44-yard field goal attempt. 
Holding is Dave Montagna. It's up. It's gone. A 44-yard field goal by Jim Nielsen. And Nielsen still hasn't missed a field goal in his career. This is his third one today against Red Snow State. A little over 11 minutes left in the third quarter. Bulldogs 16, the Beavers 9. A seven-point lead for Fresno State. Nielsen capping that last Beaver drive with a 44-yard field goal. His third of the day. So Belli has three field goals. Nielsen has three. Squib onside kick almost. The ball is picked up by Mark Olson, who returns the ball to the 37. Linebackers always love to carry that ball, especially linebackers from Santa Barbara. Uh, Mark Olson always uh, drops up at the opportune moment. Either blocking kicks or, or knocking down passes or, or running back kickoffs. He's, that's two he's run back today. <laughs> that's right. Lavelle Thomas and James Williams in the eye formation for Kevin Sweeney. Williams to the 40. Williams to the 42. Jeff Snyder, the middle linebacker, caught up with him, put him down. That'll be a pickup of five by Williams. You, know, you watch Williams run, you don't think he's made anything, but the unpiled, he's got four or five yards. Mm -hmm. He's got 47 so far in this game. But the big moment in the game for Fresno State, the 96-yard touchdown pass from Kevin Sweeney to Stephen Baker. Baker took it in stride somewhere between the 35 and the 40 and raced the rest of the way for the touchdown. And a timeout call by Kevin Sweeney. Well, Kevin didn't like what he saw there in the defense. Rather than, than that's a good, good idea to take a timeout. It's better than getting a delay of the game call. Five-yard five yard penalty now right here would not be a... Uh, put the Bulldogs in a good situation. Right now they've got second and maybe six and a half, a little over six yards, and he put them in a trip, uh, what I call a a slot set there. It's two wide receivers. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Pepsi and your local Pepsi Cola bottler. He had them in a, a, a twin set. In other words, he had both wide receivers out here, one of them in the slot and one of them wide, Baker and Taylor. And he didn't like the coverage that the Bulldogs have been in, and I think it was a good reason to call a timeout and, and get a different play from the offensive coordinator. Sweeney is 7 out of 15 in the game for 202 yards. When you can complete one for 96, it really helps. Well, that, that certainly helped the passing stats. Here's the same set, Mike. Gene Taylor wide to the right. Baker is in the slot to the right. Taylor coming in motion, just coming into your screen. There's the throw to Baker at the 40. And Baker is wrapped by Ose Lewis, and a penalty marker is dropped. There's a clipping penalty out here against the Bulldogs again. That's a... Uh, There's the clip. And Dave Craigthorpe of Oregon State, his team trails by seven. The pass out to out to Baker. Here's a can't see the clip. Well, that, that, was, that was questionable but from where we saw it. It looked like the, the defensive back turned his back to him. The clipping penalty will move the ball back to the 25. It'll be second down. That's worse than a holding call because one's 10, one's 15. It's hard to overcome a 15-yard penalty. Second and 19 now for Fresno State from their own 25. The Bulldogs lead 16-9. Kevin has time to set up, and he goes to Taylor. This is going to be another Fresno State score. Touchdown, Gene Taylor, Fresno State. 75 yards. A couple of lightning bolts.
strikes. 96 yards by Kevin Sweeney. This went for 75 yards. And look at the celebration. This is a deep post pattern by Taylor. Kevin wants to spread things around the last one to Baker. Watch. Taylor will get down and run a post pattern. He runs toward the goal post. A great throw and a great reception by Taylor. And he just outlegs the, the defender. Uh, that's uh, LeVance Northington, number two. Couldn't quite catch up to Taylor. And the celebration on the sidelines. Geno Taylor taking it in. Belli to kick the extra point out of the hold of Carton. Perfect. And we have just under 10 minutes left in the third quarter. The Bulldogs increase their lead over the Beavers of Oregon State to 23-9 here in Corvallis, Oregon. Twenty-three nine. No run back here. The touchback, and the Beavers will have a first down from their twenty. Talk about lightning striking twice! Wow, Sweeney to Baker for ninety-six. Sweeney to Taylor seventy-five. But a lot of this was made possible by the fact that the Bulldogs have established a running game, the threat of the running game, and so they didn't have this last year because they had they they just couldn't. Uh, Mount a running game, so everybody knew Kevin was going to throw the ball. Wilhelm with a first down from his 20. Wilhelm across the middle. It is intercepted. Webster again, his second interception of the game. Off the hands of the tight end, Ron Heller. Wilhelm's pass hit Heller in the palm of the hands and squirted up into the air, and there is the opportunistic Rod Webster, the sophomore from Fresno. Both of his interceptions have come after a deflection. You watch the ball hits Ron Heller in the hands, and ricochets off, and Webster's right there. That's Webster on the spot. <laughs> he knows what to do with it. Well, they practice that in their oh, secondary sure. drills. That's called a tip, tip drill. Tip drill. They work it all the time. Rod evidently is a very receptive student, very apt pupil. I would give him an A for effort right there. First and ten, the ball is at the 30 of Oregon State. 23-9 Bulldogs, and Fresno State with an opportunity to get some more. In the backfield with Sweeney is Lavelle Thomas and James Williams. A reverse, Kelly Skipper at the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, out of bounds around the five-yard line. Jim Sweeney pulling that one out of the hat, and Kelly Skipper down the sidelines. Watch this is a double reverse, a handoff, a handoff here to to Williams, then a handoff back to Skipper. That's a half back to half back reverse. That's called a flea flicker or a Sally Rand or whatever you want to call it. But it's a uh, Sally Rand. <laughs> oh my well, a Sally Rand is a naked reverse here like that. I guess so. First and six. A first and goal at the six-yard line of Oregon State. It is Williams. He slams his way to the three. It looked like he wasn't going to make anything, but he picked up three yards. Second and three now. Osei Lewis on the tackle. And uh, Fresno State, we still have a lot of time to play. It's 9-20 still to go in the third quarter. 23-9. to nine. And the Bulldogs have the ball with a second down at the Oregon State three. Full house backfield. The give is to Williams. Williams is crunched down after two. Williams is starting to make his cut and was pulled down by Don Odegaard, the right cornerback. Third and goal now at the two. Well, now uh, they've, they've got a little dilemma here now. Do you go for the, do you run for the two yards or do you fake a run and, and uh, maybe hit your tight end with a pass? That's what they tried to do last time they're down. They're trying to third down and at third down and a half yard, they they faked the run and Kevin tried to hit the the, the end out in the flat. What do you think about a fake Williams and a little short pass in the end zone? You know what I'd do? What? I'd give the ball to Williams, let him run a little, not up in the middle. I don't think I think the worst playing football if you try to run a short yardage from tackle to tackle and to have one back leading another. The only now if you're going wide, you need to have somebody lead them. A little counter dive or anything, giving the ball to Williams. Again, it'll be a full house backfield. Lavelle Thomas, and the give is to Williams. We got in, I believe. No signal yet, though, from the officials. Yeah, now we get it. Touchdown, James Williams. We had uh, several Bulldog players signal it before the officials. They're giving them a little help there. 
Well, that's what I said I'd do. Give the ball to Williams, and you run, run a little wide. Run off tackle. Don't run up inside a tackle. That's what they did, and, that's, and they scored. A good job by the... Let's give that offensive line some credit. And, you know, I think Lovering, Lafitte, and Savage, and Grove, and Lerma, they were all doing an excellent job up there. Belli to try to add one more point to the Fresno State ledger. Team to snap, Chris Dugan. The holder, Brian Carden. Right through again. And now the Bulldogs. Eight minutes left to be played here in the third quarter. Let's remember, Mike, that they've had the wind at their back. Uh, well, well, we'll talk about the wind when we come back on this commercial. All right, we'll do just that. Can you believe the halftime score was only 9-6, Fresno State? And now, look, we've played not quite seven minutes, actually 6.45 in this third quarter, and it's 30-9, to nine, Fresno State. Well, and all those Fresno fans at the scoreboard are having a great time with those gourmet hot dogs and cheering and knocking themselves out. Thomas will make no attempt to run it out. The touchback brought out to the 20. Skipper was the, with well, that reverse, was the key in that drive, setting up the two yard uh, plunge by Williams. Uh, I think that at night, when just when he's contemplating uh, the returning man, I'm sure that he's happy that Skipper's going to be around for four years. Now the Oregon State band from across the way trying to give the Beavers a bit of a boost. They need it right now, down by 21 points, but this is an explosive Oregon State team as long as you have a talented quarterback like an Eric Wilhelm and a great receiver like Reggie Bynum. Wilhelm ready to go to work again. Dumps it off to Lane. Carl Lane is up for about a... Did he fumble? The, Beaver, or the Beavers think so, and so do the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs claim they have it, and indeed they do. Uh, David Grayson covers that football for Fresno State. Uh, I was just going to comment that Lane is the quickest running back, number, number 23, that, that the Beavers have. He gets a, a pass out in the flat, a little screen pass. There was a clip there in the play, too. There's Webster in here again, but the ball is recovered by, by 45. Grayson. Grayson. Fresno State can bust this game wide open. First and 10 now for the Bulldogs at the 28 of Oregon State. Lavelle Thomas, Williams out of the eye formation for Kevin Sweeney. The fake to Williams. Sweeney rolling up to his right is nailed back at the 39. Gino Mingo makes the hit for Oregon State. Gino Mingo, 256 pounds, junior from Denver. This rollout has been very effective for Kevin, but Mingo comes in number 91. He's got great speed. They tell me he runs a 4'5", 40, and he weighs 256 pounds. He looked like a third, didn't he? He really flew. Great bloodlines for Gino Mingo. His dad, the former place kicker with the Denver Broncos. Second and 19 now as the ball has moved back to the Beaver, 37. Bulldogs, 30. Oregon State, 9. Kevin Sweeney looking for Baker. Lays it off instead to Lavelle Thomas coming out of the backfield. And the pass was high for Thomas. And look at Jim Sweeney. That says it all. Doesn't he, didn't, he didn't like that pass. Thomas was open, at, and uh, I think Kevin threw a little behind him. Baker appeared to be open, too, at the 20. But it's so much easier to see that from oh, up yeah. here than it is down it's, on the it, field. It's, yeah, I'm sure it's hard to, to pick out your receivers and you've got those big monsters rushing at you from the defensive line. Williams to the right. Lavelle Thomas to the left of Sweeney. Sweeney going long and deep for Vince Wesson. He might have been intercepted in the end zone. Touchback, yep. The interception is made by LaVance Northington. That is his fourth interception of this young season. Northington, a junior from San Jose. Let's watch Levance, the Worthington now, the defensive right cornerback. He goes all the way back. 
Kevin's trying to throw lob. The receiver really wasn't open. I thought he was trying to throw it away. He's trying to throw it to Weston. I think he was trying to throw it out of the end zone, but he didn't quite get there. Another yard, it would have been out of the field to play, but that's Kevin's only interception of the day. And it didn't do that much damage, except they didn't come up with a chance for a three-point play on a field goal on next down. All right, here is Wilhelm. He's going to go long and deep for Robert Adams, and Adams can't get the ball at the 40, and the Oregon State fans thought that Adams was interfered with. Roar Kelly covering Adams. Those floppy uniforms. I told the story at the outset. We'll repeat it again. Oregon State went to new uniforms this year with a new head coach trying to get a new image. The manufacturer didn't deliver the uniforms until three days before the first game. And all of the uniforms came in extra large. Well, they look big. The uniform, not the players. Eric Hoshaver and Carl Lane. Running backs for Eric Wilhelm, but he's got to play catch up now, 21 points behind. It goes to Bynum. He didn't have control of it long enough, I don't believe. If they're going to mark his progress, out of bounds at the 49. Michael Stewart made the hit on Bynum. They, they called it a, a, an incomplete pass when he fumbled. I don't know if he had the ball before he went out of bounds. Control of it, watch it. Yes, he did, I guess. And it goes out of bounds right there. Good call by the officials. So the ball now with a first down for Oregon State from their 49. No, Bynum only needs a total of 31 receptions from going into this game to be the all-time receiver in, in Beaver history. And he's going to get it, barring injury. He's got eight so far today. Montagna makes the catch. Dave Montagna from Orinda, California. Anthony Nunn made the hit. The ball is spotted down at the 41 of Fresno State. All right. Wilhelm gets back. He's, he's certainly a cool customer. Throws a pass out to Matania, the flanker. There's Anthony Nunn, number 96, making the tackle. They'll spot the ball at the 43 of Fresno State. It'll be second down, and the Beavers need three to get a first down. Wilhelm in the corner, caught by Adams, but he caught it out of bounds. That's about three passes now that they've had caught out of bounds, but they, he wasn't even close to being inbound. Michael Stewart uh, covering the, uh, Adams very aggressively. I'll see what this penalty is all about. It's right in the vicinity of offensive holding. I don't know if that's it. That's it. A holding penalty against the Beavers. Well, what do you do? I'd be. Uh, oh, well, I would take it. I'd, I'd get him back there. And Fresno State will indeed take the penalty. Because otherwise they're going to have third and two. This That's will right. make the thir third and 12. Anytime you see that umpire throw the flag, you know, it's, it's well, 99 times out of 100, it's on the offensive team. That'll move the ball back to the 47 of Oregon State. It'll be second down, second and 13. People don't, it's, it's, it's hard for the, under, the average fan to know the duties of all the officials, but the umpire stands behind the defensive linebackers, and his responsibility is to watch the, the five offensive linemen, the interior linemen, and that's his area for as far as holding or any other fouls that are committed. Bo Shaver is wide right, Bynum wide left. Wilhelm always looking for Bynum. Throws it to Reggie, drops the ball at the 37. Now, how often are you going to see that? Bynum, one of the, he was all Pac-10 last year, one of the nation's best pass receivers. The ball was right in the midsection. Now, he ran a perfect pattern because he, he ran 14 yards deep and turned in and had the ball, was the ball hit him right in the chest. He took his eye off a moment till he said, I, I think that the, uh, was that Stewart that came in there? Stewart put his hand up, I think might have distracted him, you know, the, the, to lose his vision a minute because he certainly didn't uh, have good concentration on that reception. Bynum has caught eight today for 134 yards, but he has dropped four that normally he does catch. All right, Wilhelm will take to the air again. Bynum again. They got one hand on that. Yeah, but that pass was way, uh, uh, way high. Now the you don't catch that pass, I don't think. A bind by the one that Wilhelm just threw? Oh, no, no, not that one. That was high, and he, it would have been a fantastic catch. He'd had to catch it with one finger. He just got one hand barely on it. Now it'll be fourth down, and Oregon State will have to call on uh, Pena to punt. Vince Wesson is back deep. 
Stewart putting the pressure on the punter. Wesson at the 15. Straight up the middle. He's got a good running room. Now he's down to the 31. Down to the field of Mike Brent. Let me tell you, Mike, the coaches here, defensive coaches on the sidelines, are not saying, let's hold them. We've got a 21-point lead. In fact, they're saying, let's take it to them. Let's cause some turnovers. And for the most part, we've seen what's, uh, what's happened. They've got the ball already, and they're back at it. That was a 38-yard punt return, uh, punt and a 16-yard return. First down at the 31 for Fresno State. The Bulldogs 30, Oregon State 9. Just under six minutes left in the third quarter. A highly explosive third period for Fresno State. The reverse, Julius Pitt doing the honors this time. Pitts to the 35, 40, 45. Pitts up to midfield, down into Oregon State territory. And that double reverse has paid handsome dividends for Fresno State. You know, that's unusual to have that play succeed when, you're, when you run it into the wide side of the field. Ordinarily, you run that back in the sideline. But here we take the pitch, the handoff from Williams to Pitts, the flanker. It's a flanker reverse, and he's got outstanding speed. And, and Pitts turned up field. Did, did a fine job of running. Tackle is made by Monson, 44, and Saunders, number 8. Number 8. Saunders. And now it's a 20-yard gain on that reverse, and it's a first and 10 for Fresno State at the 49 of Oregon State. Kelly Skipper. And a penalty marker goes down. Jim Curitan had Skipper by the back of the jersey. Well, that's not a violation of the rule. I don't know if the, if the man in front grabbed his face mask or not, but you can't see whether there's a, whether there's a holding or... That, that was called by the linesman out there, the head linesman. You know what? He's got his face mask. Look yep. at that. Now, that should be a 15-yard penalty because he deliberately had that face mask. If it's called incidental, it's five yards. That should be a... He should get the major penalty on that one because he definitely had a hold of the face mask and turned his head right around. But they're marking off only five, moving the ball to the 44. Well, he, he told the official, I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> First and five now for Fresno State at the 44 of the Beavers. This is a great passing situation now. First and five. I, look, I think Kevin will put the ball in the air here. I think he tried to go for the ball. Gene Taylor to the left side. Stephen Baker to the right. Mosley is the fullback. Taylor coming in motion. The pitch goes to Williams. Williams gets a couple of yards, but no more. Runs right into Jim Kurt. And Curitan, the sophomore from San Jose, made sure of his tackle. You can see that I'm not calling offensive plays. I, I, I've had a couple, I guess, guess right today, but I've been wrong. You know, uh, See, that's it. Someone asked me if I was ever wrong. I said, yes, that was the time I thought it was, and I wasn't. <laughs> second down, three at the 40, well, call it second and four at the 43. The ball is at the 43 of Oregon State. Pitts coming back this way, not quite in your screen. to get outside because of Jim Curitan. I understand we've had some more audio problems and video as well. So as a result, I will tell you that we have three minutes and 21 seconds left in the third quarter. Fresno State leading 30 to 9 over Oregon State. A highly explosive third period for the Bulldogs. 21 points thus far. Fresno led at the intermission 9-6. Now it's second and ten from the 35. Setting up the screen. And that one skips on the first hop to James Williams. And Kevin's right back on the on the side. They got hit just as he let the ball go. It was a screen pass. And, and Kevin was backing up and didn't get the ball out far enough. The screen was open, but he didn't quite get it out there to the receiver. Out for, out for Williams. Ten for Williams. But this has been a productive third period for Jim Sweeney's son, Kevin. A 96-yard touchdown pass play to Stephen Baker, and then he hooked up with Gene Taylor, 75 yards and a score. 39, Fresno State on top. Taylor and Baker. Wesson in motion. Sweeney intercepted. Pulled on by Harold Johnson, the linebacker. That's the second time that Kevin Sweeney has been intercepted in this game. And what's this interception now? 
It's intercepted by Harold Johnson, number 84. Kevin didn't throw this one like he usually does. The ball was thrown high at sail. I think the wind causes it to sail when you're throwing with the wind. He was, throwing to, he was throwing to Anthony Mosley and went sail right over his head. But you know, the, these last two possessions, they've had two interceptions which have resulted in the Bulldogs not being able to attempt a field goal. And they fell within Bell Eye's range both times. The Fresno State defense did the job in the first two quarters, limiting the Beavers to just a couple of field goals. And the Fresno State defense doing the job again here in the third quarter. 30 to 9. Fresno State, a little over three minutes still to be played in the third period. Swing pass complete to Jeff Jordan. Jordan is up to the 42. Check it, it's Carl Lane. Lane is the quickest back that they have. At least he looks the quickest. And he's, he's got that explosive speed. That he's, and you have to watch it. He's capable of going all the way at any time. He almost did in that right at the start of the second half. Okay. He ran about 30 yards down the sidelines. Anthony Collier made the tackle on Carl Lane. Second down and a little over a yard to go. The ball at the 41. Malone and Lane, the running backs for Oregon State. And it is Malone. He's got the first down. And he's pushed down hard by Anthony Collier. Mike, the shadows have completely enveloped the field now, and the lights are on. But yet we still have some sun over to the left. We have, yeah, we still have sun off the, well, on, the, on the practice field. We have maybe better move the game over to the practice field. A rather odd start here today in Corvallis, a 4.07 kickoff. Ball is at the 43 of Oregon State. The Bulldogs lead it by 21 points. Fresno State 30, Oregon State 9. Wilhelm throwing long and deep for Montagna. It is intercepted by Webster, his third interception in the game. Rod Webster to the 30, struck down at the 32. Wow, what a game Rod Webster is having. Uh, Webster got injured on the play. He made a great interception. I, I don't think he's serious. He's getting up. Let's watch this. Wilhelm trying to throw deep to Bynum. The ball is battered around. Webster, he really is a, one of the best... <laughs> Operated in that tip drill I've ever seen. That's three inter interceptions had all were tipped, either by a receiver or by another defensive back. Rod Webster's third interception of the day. Then he can do something with it after he picks it off. He returned it 12 yards, and Fresno State with the first down from the Bulldog 32. Mosley and Williams in the backfield. It'll be Mosley, but not for long. Bob Klein wraps him up and throws him back. Whoops, he's still going. Mosley up to the 32, up to the 36. I don't know what kind of an escape artist Anthony Mosley is, but the quarterback, Kevin Sweeney, sprung him with a great block. I hope we can pick it up. I think that Mosley gets, uses his forearm here to break a tackle. Watch him here. If he breaks his tackle here break with his forearm, breaks his tackle. Great balance. Look at that block by Kevin. Kevin Sweeney. Blocking Gino Mingo. He's going to get killed doing that. <laughs> yeah, but he's going to get a pat on the back from his oh, dad. Oh, sure. Well, the Sweeneys are tough. His dad played football that way. His dad was a great player. What was his number at the... Number, number 83. They retired his number at Portland. And they University. retired football today. Well, that's year. right. They retired all the numbers. <laughs> Here comes Mosley up the middle to the 42. They retired my number at Syracuse, number four. They start numbering at 10 now. That's Wait a minute. You were number four? I was a guard at number four. That's right. You can't be number four in a guard Not anymore. Not anymore, but you could when I played. I played back, you know, quite a few years ago. Jose Lewis on the tackle. Who was your coach at Syracuse, Duffy Doherty? Well, Ozzy Solomon was the head coach. Bud Wilkinson was my line coach. He coached me, Bud Wilkinson. Mm. He said that he decided to, this right before World War II, he said he decided if he could win a lot of football games with players like Duffy, that the coaching wouldn't be such a bad career. And he said, if I ever got any good players, I know I could be a success. And, and he was a great success. He finally got some good players. Going to be a little bit short of a first down. When you were playing ball at Syracuse, how much did you weigh as a guard? I weighed 190 pounds. I wasn't very big, but I sure was slow. <laughs> Mike Mancini getting ready in case he's called on to kick. Uh, we got, they have another down to make that first down. Third down coming up and about two feet to go. Fresno State 30, Oregon State 9. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. 
Baker wide to the left. How about a quarterback sneak here by Kevin? Williams, and he's got the first down as he pops up to the 45. Williams picking up the first down. I'm Harold really Johnson made the tackle. I'm really impressed with Williams. I think that, you know, coaches like those north and south runners, those fellas, are, because football fields are ordinarily laid out north and south. And they like to have backs that run straight up the field that don't dance around and try to move laterally all the time. He's a... Baker north, to the left. A north and south runner. And Taylor to the right. The pitch to Williams juggles. Williams with the speed turns around the corner and gets up close to midfield. Some backs wouldn't have had the speed to get around the corner, but Williams did. It, it looks like it looked like he was uh, was contained, but he he ran right by the contained man and he was finally knocked out of bounds by Northington. That'll be the end of the third quarter, and what a highly productive third period it was for the Bulldogs of Fresno State, leading 30 to nine as we head into the final period from Corvallis, Oregon. This class is perhaps the greatest discovery of the 25th century. A dwelling called the Split Level Ranch. That graphic tells the story of the third quarter. 21 points for Fresno State. A 96-yard pass, Sweeney to Baker. A 75-yard touchdown pass, Sweeney to Taylor. And a two-yard plunge by Williams. Each time, Belli unerringly tacked on the point. It'll be Williams to the 45-40, and they get him out of bounds. Don Odegaard, the freshman quarterback, grabbing around the shoulder pads and twisting him out of bounds. Uh, the way he glides with that uh, as he runs, it's, it's just just amazing. Uh, you, you mentioned he's, it's, it's, that's the way O.J. Simpson used to make so many yards. Look at the block by Chris Dugan. He just glides along. He doesn't look like he's moving, but he just runs by people. There's Odegaard, knocks him out of bounds, but that's just excellent running by Williams. And an excellent block by Chris Dugan. You've got to give those guys oh, that block a lot of credit as darn, well. Darn right. That offensive line's done a tremendous job all day long. Ball is at the 38 of Oregon State. Mosley twisting his way down to the 34. Oh. Mosley, a 200-pound junior fullback from Selma, California. Look at these running backs now. Williams, Mosley, Kelly Skipper, and, uh, and Lavelle Thomas. The four, four running backs are all doing a, a fine job. Watch this pirouette here, this twist here by Mosley. He's, he's practicing for a, a little uh, dance routine he's going to do. Ball is at the 34. Opening seconds of the fourth quarter. 39, Fresno State. Here comes Williams again. And he gallops down to the 27 of the Beavers. Gino Mingo brought him down. Uh, here we are. Here we are again. Watching Williams. Watch the two. Good block. Good block. But those offensive linemen clearing the way. There's Williams cutting back in. He's just a, a, a very, very versatile back, a running back, Williams, and he's, he's very durable and very strong. And he's getting up close to another 100-yard-plus game. 89 yards for James Williams in 22 carries. Williams had 154 against UNLV in the opener a week ago. First down at the 27. Here goes Williams again. Look at that jitterbug move of his. Gets down to the 20, did I say Williams? It's Kelly Skipper. Kelly Skipper. There's an old, it's, let's watch Kelly Skipper now. He's got some good moves now. He, he's certainly built like a fire plug. He's very powerful. He's only about five foot seven, but he weighs about 180, 85 pounds, and he packs a wallop when he runs, and he, he's just a strong, strong runner. Oh, Only saw, a freshman, too. You saw how Lopez had to bulldog him down. That's right. You know, there's no adage in football. When you have the wind at your back, you try to get in many places and you can't throw the ball. When you're against the wind, you try to run the ball, control the ball, and use up the clock. And score while you're doing it. Kelly Skipper, Lavelle Thomas, the running backs. Kevin Sweeney rolling to his left. Dropped by Baker. The pass was thrown behind Baker a little bit. He had to put on the brakes and come back for it. Well, Kevin Sweeney was running for his life there, and he was running to his left and didn't have a chance to get his shoulders upfield. 
And it's hard to throw accurately unless your shoulders are facing upfield. And he didn't have a chance to do that. Did so uh, the technique on that wasn't what he wanted it to be. They have not been able on the rollouts to get outside of that contain. Once you get outside the contain, you've got the defense over the barrel because if they come up, you throw behind them. If they don't go up, the quarterback can run with the ball. Third and six at the 23. Kelly Skipper goes down at about the 26. On the tackle, Gino Mingo. Now we'll see another field goal attempt, Mike. Well, yeah, Barry Belli, number 27, trotting onto the field along with 15 Carden. Greg Lovering also in there on the offensive line for Fresno State. This would be from the 33 yard line, so it'd be a 43 yard field goal for Barry Belli. This would be his fourth field goal in the game if he can kick this one. He'll have to kick it into the wind. Good. Another field goal by Barry Belli, his fourth in the game. And the Bulldogs now have a 33-9 lead over Oregon State. Twelve and a half minutes left here in Corvallis, Oregon. Barry Belli, a big day for the young man. From Fresno State, four field goals, preparing to kick off to either Reggie Hawkins or Rob Thomas. That last field goal, good for 43 yards. So Belli has been able to kick him long today. He's had field goals of 32, 43, 43, and this is his third 43-yard field goal in the game. Very by. That one doesn't go very far. It's grabbed over there in the far side at around the 25-yard line by Roman Fortin, a backup tight end, number 83. Uh, Mike, the, the wind has picked up in velocity. I think the wind's stronger now than at any time during the game. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Vons, the supermarket with warehouse prices and no sacrifices. The Bulldogs 33-9 over Oregon State. And again, when you think of this high-powered Oregon State offense, at least in the opener against Idaho in the second game against Cal, the Fresno State defense has held them without a touchdown. Wilhelm, why oh, it's almost intercepted. Oh, Anthony Nunn, the linebacker, had it, and he might have had a sure six because he had that ball in his grasp at the 26 with a clear pat, but he didn't hold on. Anthony's a little angry at himself. He gets back. He gets good depth for a linebacker. And the ball's thrown... Wilhelm's rushed. He throws the ball right in Anthony Nunn's hands. That's a classic example of trying to run before you catch the ball. But he was back there. He was in good position. The stats on Eric Wilhelm, uh, 19 out of 35 for 166 yards. Three have been intercepted, all three by Rod Webster. This pass was nowhere near a receiver. I think he just dumped that, got rid of it. It's a tough spot for this freshman to be in right now. You're down by 24 points early in the fourth quarter. You got a pass in just about every play. In fairness to these quarterbacks, it's completely different when you're throwing with the wind than against. You notice when you throw with the wind, how that ball sails on them. A lot of the passes have been overthrown with the wind. Against the wind, they'll sort of the wind will knock them down. Bynum is wide right. Wilhelm looking for him. Bynum's trying to get free, but meanwhile, Wilhelm goes down. <laughs> Wilhelm pulled down by Greg Ramsey, and uh, also in there was Victor Burnett. I think Victor Burnett here reaches around a blocker right here. Right here, he had 87, reached around a blocker, and he gets credit for the sack. Number 87. Greg Ramsey. Greg Ramsey. Good, good job. Those, those down linemen have done a fantastic job. Glenn Pena is ready to punt, and... Julius Pitts is deep. Pitts will field this at the 44. To the 50. And he gets to the Oregon State 47. We have 11 and a half minutes still to be played in this game at Parker Stadium. The crowd started out in 
bright sunshine with shirt sleeves, and now they're gone to the sweaters and the coats. Temperatures probably dropped about 10 degrees at in least, the last half hour. At least that, Mike. Uh, I think uh, that uh, Coach, Coach Swinney will probably have his team try to stay on the, stay on the crowd again. Well, let's check in with Mike Brandt on the sidelines from TV 26 and see what he has to say. I'll tell you what the cold has to do with it here. It is a little warmer up in the box, I'm sure, but it's causing some of the players to cramp up a little bit. We saw earlier sitting on the bench Julius Pitts and uh, linebacker David Grayson was a little hurt for a little while, cramped, but he's okay. And before they can get this one off, Har Young is the quarterback now for Fresno State. Josh Har Young from Mission Viejo, California. This will be delay of the game. Well, that happens oftentimes. A new quarterback comes in, he, he's got a different cadence. And it, we got a little illegal procedure. The linemen started to move before the ball was snapped, and the quarter, no two quarterbacks have the same cadence. Moves the ball to the Fresno State 49, first and 15. Vince Wesson is in the slot to the left. Josh Haryung, the quarterback. Haryung back to throw. And he skips this one on the first top. He was throwing to Chris Leonard, but the pass was too low. Leonard had no opportunity to make the grab. Well, I think uh, Coach Sweeney's smart to get a get his uh, number two quarterback in the ball game. He's got to have some experience and you never know when you're going to need that number two man. Not that a three touchdown lead is safe in this modern game of football. Teams can score three touchdowns in no time at all. Prime example was the case of UCLA in Tennessee a week ago at Knoxville, Tennessee. Looked like the volunteers had it sewed up. UCLA able to tie. Lavelle Thomas around the right side. He goes close to the 40 of Oregon State. Don Odegaard made the tackle. The totals on Kevin Sweeney in the game, as you look at Thomas trotting back to the huddle. Eight out of 23, 277 yards, two touchdowns, the bombs to Baker and to Taylor, three interceptions. Well, Kevin doesn't usually throw many interceptions. He's got those... Uh Third down and four. The ball is at the 41 of Oregon State. Out of the I formation, Har Young, the quarterback. Har Young will throw. He can. And he's hit so hard, he pops up the ball. Oregon State has it. Somebody got Har Young from the blind side. It was Jim Curitan who popped Har Young so hard, he popped up the ball. And Jose Lewis covers the ball for Oregon State. Here it is. Jim Curtin, number 87, recovers the fumble. Oh, Jim, 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 oh, Jose Lewis got the fumble. Jim Curtin made the tackle. Jose Lewis, the ex-quarterback, made the tag, made the, uh, recovered the fumble. Coaches used to recruit a lot of fullbacks. Now they recruit quarterbacks because they're most generally the best athlete on the team. Eric Wilhelm will look at a first down at the Fresno State 47. His team trails 33-9. Lane to the 42. A pickup of five by Carl Lane. Again, Anthony Nunn making the tackle. Uh, Anthony Nunn has been near the ball all day long. He's, he's played an outstanding game. Nunn is a sophomore, 6'1", 230. Dos Palos, California. Look at the blood on the uniform of Carl Lane. That's not his own, though. <laughs> that doesn't bother him. Wilhelm to bite him. And he's run down by David Grayson, who takes him down like a wrestler in college. That only picked up about two yards there. He was covered very well by Grayson. Grayson's got a cramp. Yep. Yep. That's, he's all right. He'll run it off. No, he may not. He's asking to come out, and Mark Olson comes in. Let's see if Grayson comes off. Yep, he's coming off now. Well, they may have to take a timeout. Well, I guess not. Ball is at the 40 of Fresno State. Third and three. Bynum comes to the right this time. The give is to Darvin Malone. Straight ahead. Squirts loose. 30. 20. 10. Out of bounds. 
seven yard line, Fresno State. It was Victor Burnett who finally caught up with Darvin Malone and ran him out of bounds at the seven. A 33 yard run by Darvin Malone from Oakland. This is the first time this has happened all day long to see a back. Malone breaks right up the middle, and Stewart was blocked. He forced out of bound by down lineman Burnett, who pursued and played the play up right to the hilt. Malone now with 55 yards and 10 carries for the Beavers. First and goal to go. The ball at the Fresno State 7. It's Carl Lane. Lane twists his way to the 4. Mike, we're talking about the game not being over. There's still over nine minutes left to go in this ball game. Well, almost 10, 945. And, and, and uh, if the Bulldogs scored three touchdowns, just a matter of about five or six minutes. But Eric Wilhelm doesn't have the strong arm of a Kevin Sweeney. That's been apparent so far in this game. Wilhelm has been effective at times, but he can't wind up and throw the bomb. Or at least he hasn't we done that. We, we haven't seen it today. But if he's thrown... Uh, six touchdown passes in two games to, to Bynum. Four of those came against Idaho in the opener. Second and goal. The ball is at the four. Bynum into the end zone and touchdown. Phil Ross, a second string tight end for Oregon State. Ross, a freshman from Seattle. And Eric Wilhelm has finally been able to guide Oregon State in for a touchdown. Here we have the Beavers getting on the scoreboard again. Wilhelm butts tight end Ross out in the flat. He was hit by Nichols, but not till after he crossed the goal line. That is the eighth touchdown in two plus games for Wilhelm. Nielsen kicks the extra point. And the score is now Fresno State 33, Oregon State 16. Nine minutes and six seconds left in this game from Corvallis, Oregon. We'll be back. Mike Walden and Duffy Doherty with you once again as Nielsen, I would guess, will try an onside kick. His Beavers are trailing by 17 points. Nine minutes and six seconds left. Nope, kicks it straight away. They had Kelly Skipper as the only back deep. And Skipper watches it float back into the end zone. Were you surprised you didn't see an onside? No, no. At that, this much time in the ball game, nine minutes, I, I think that they're smart to kick it downfield uh, because if they don't make the onside kick, and uh, I think most teams have a signal. When a team is defending it like the Bulldogs were, they have nine men up close. They call it off and kick it down. And back in at quarterback for Fresno State, Kevin Sweeney. A touchdown by Oregon State was set up when Har Young was blindsided by Jim Puritan and Jose Lewis recovered the fumble. 33-16, Fresno State. Here comes James Williams to the 25. 30, Williams out of bounds. And they ruled that he touched the sideline marker at the 36. Good block by the flanker, Julius Pitts. Let's see if he can pick it up. No, watch Kevin, watch uh, Jimmy Williams. He, he moves to the inside, gives a little fake to the inside, then goes to the outside. Yep. He, he does that without slowing down. Then he steps out of bounds at the 36 yard line. There was the block. You can see it by Pitts. Pitts was blocking to the inside, and Williams went to the outside. That's right. He takes advantage of his blockers very well. He uses them. He sets up the, the defensive man for the blocker. It helps the blockers out, too. 108 yards now for Williams. His second 100-plus game rushing for Fresno State. 24 carries, 108. Anthony Mosley tries the middle. And he finds that good for a couple of yards as he moves up to the 39. Jose Lewis again on the tackle. Lewis has had a big day as far as being near the football. He's not that big, but he's got good quickness. And, and he's not that strong, but... He may be dragged a few yards, but he, he, he hangs on till, till the ball carry gets down. Lewis has been averaging 10 tackles in the first two games for Oregon State. And he's up close to that again. Williams runs right smack dab into Rich Haggerty. And Haggerty throws him back another five or so. They will mark his forward progress. Uh, Haggerty is the Mark Olson of the Beaver football team. 
you might see him anywhere along that uh, defensive line. He plays all three positions, and he played an excellent play there. He, he wasn't blocked. We have some uh, second quarter scores to pass along. Utah 10, Washington State 7, Baylor 10, USC 7. That's in the second quarter. This is Williams. He's to midfield and down to the Oregon State 48. LaVance Northington made the tackle. Second quarter score, New Mexico State 9, UTEP 7. Here comes Williams again. He goes inside of the defensive end, heads up field, just breaks tackle after tackle. He's finally stopped by Northington, number two. And let me put in one other score in the second quarter. BYU 7, Temple 7. Uh oh. Well, Temple's played everybody tough this year. They've, they've lost two tough ones. 33-16, Fresno State, seven and a half minutes remaining. It'll be Williams. He's flipped down hard. Uh, Kelly Skipper, that is. Harold Johnson making the tackle. The flag down on the play. I think that we may have a holding penalty against the Bulldogs. They may not... I would almost uh, decline that if he brings up a, a second and 12. I don't know if they're going to take it or not. It'll be a first and 20 or a second and 12. What would you do, Mike? I would say, Jim Cini, you make the call. Well, you know it's got to be done by, by, by Dave. Greg Tharp. That's it. They want to get their hands on the ball. You, you can't score in, in a football game without the ball. That'll spot the ball at the 49. The Bulldogs have run two minutes off here now, seven minutes and ten seconds left, so they're running out, trying to run up the clock. 33-16, Fresno State. It's Mosley to the 45, put down at the 41. Anthony Mosley. Jamie Norman brought him down. This is a quick draw. A fake of a pass, a quick draw to Mosley, right up the got the offensive line over the big hook there. Uh oh, there Norman comes in, makes the tackle secure. Did you notice the block by the center, Mike Savage? Mike has done a good job. Savage has blocked very, very well all day long. Bulldogs 33, Oregon State 16, six and a half minutes to play in Corvallis. It'll be James Williams. Penalty marker goes down as Williams is tackled by Gino Mingo. And this penalty will be against Oregon State. A little off sides there, I think. They, oh, no, against, it's against the, the uh, Bulldogs. I'm surprised because I saw all of the Oregon State players complaining, slapping their hands to their thighs. But that's the referee, Colin McDermott, explaining the options to Osei Lewis. That's a holding penalty against Fresno State decline. That's two holding penalties in that one drive. There. So we will get Mike Mancini to punt on fourth down. You can't call for holding anymore. The fact that the alignment allowed to use their hands, you almost have to reach out and grab someone. Robert Adams will be back deep for Oregon State. Line scrimmage is the 44 of Oregon State. Good snap from Chris Dugan. A lot of hang time by that punt from Mike Mancini. Adams gathers it in at the 17. Oregon State now will have a first down from their 17. 5.53 left. And the Bulldogs with a 17-point lead over Oregon State from the Pac-10. From Henry Ellard of the Los Angeles Rams. And it read, Coach... Tell the dogs we owe Oregon State one. Elder remembering that game up here in 1981, 31 to 28, Oregon State. And now the Bulldogs lead 33 16 with 5.53 to play. Wilhelm sets up and he throws to Darvin Malone. Malone to the 27. Tackle made by George Peterson. That's uh, not quite a first down. A little nine yard gain. The clock is still running. Here's a pass. Wilhelm hits Malone, number three, out here. Peterson comes in to make the tackle. Stewart looked like he had the tackle first. And then he, little, he got away from Stewart, and then Peterson finally made it. 
made the play. They're measuring for the first down, and it's going to be that much shy. Number 19 in your screen, in case you're just joining us on the telecast, Rod Webster, and the sophomore from Fresno has had three intercepted passes here today. Now, they, this is not more than the first down, yet they stopped the clock to measure it, which the clock should have, you can, it was obvious it was not a first down. You can see it from up here, they made nine yards. And yet they, the officials stopped the clock now. Now they'll start it. Once they get back there, they're supposed to start the clock up again after the, Here it is again. Little pass out, out to Malone. Stewart comes up and just gets a hand on him. He gets out of Stewart, Stewart's grip. That came Peterson from the side and made the tackle. Harry Corey is wide to the left side. Bynum to the right. Quarterback sneak by Wilhelm to pick up the first down, and it looks like he's got it. First down, Oregon State. Here's a quarterback sneak. It's a, probably, when you have less than a yard to go, it's probably the safest and the surest play in football. The quarterback can tap the center and let him know whether he's going to go to the right or go to the left. Take advantage of his block. Find him to the right with a first down for the Beavers from their 27. Wilhelm retreats 10 yards, dumps it off. Coming across the middle, Carl Lane. Lane gets to the 32, tackled by Anthony Nunn. Uh, I think the Bulldogs are going to have to start putting some pressure on Wilhelm here. They're, they're using a three-man rush. Here's Lane, the quickest man out of their backfield. And there comes Anthony Nunn, made the tackle. Nice juggling act by Lane. But he regained possession. Got the ball up to the 32. He's very quick. Wilhelm has been averaging just about that many passes in his first two games against Idaho and Cal, so he's right on target in what he's been doing so far. There's the tight end, Ross, who scored the touchdown earlier for Oregon State, Phil Ross. Michael Stewart and Byron Nichols made the tackle on Ross. Ball is at the 48, first down for Oregon State, following the 17-yard gain. Another flag in the play, Mike. We're not, there's an ineligible receiver downfield. That would be loss of a down also, won't it? Will. We had 16 penalties in the first half, eight on each team. And it looked like we were going to be up near the 32-33 mark of a week ago. That was a, a big break here for the, for the Bulldogs. Oregon State will play Fresno State next year. That'll be September the 18th at Bulldog Stadium. Oregon State will open the 1986 season against UCLA August the 30th in Great Britain. In Great Britain. That's right. Well, blimey. They'll have a jolly good time over there. Bynum wide to the right side. Wilhelm. Escapes. Still has time. Now he's going to run it. Wilhelm is pulled down by Greg Ramsey. The freshman shows me some poise. He, he doesn't force a pass like some freshmen would do. Of course, as you pointed out, he is a redshirt freshman, which means that he has been around for two years. But uh, he knows what to do. He plays not like a freshman. He's not ever going to make a lot of yards running. He's not that quick no. foot. He's got a quick arm, a quick release of the ball, but he doesn't run that fast. They are starting to make some comparisons, although it's very early in the season between Wilhelm and Terry Baker. Do you see any similarities? Well, they both threw left-handed. They're about the same size. Both blonde. Both blonde. Both from Portland. Both from Portland. That's a lot of stuff. But I think that he's got to go away yet before oh. he equals the great Terry Baker. Terry yeah. Baker won the Heisman Award Absolutely. in Wilhelm puts it up there, and it is incomplete. It was, he was going this time for... Craig Calloway. Well, Bynum has been conspicuous by not being in there to, as their pass receiver in the last two drives. At least he had not been the target of any of these uh, passes by Wilhelm in the last two drives by the, by the Beavers. All smiles. Kevin Sweeney over in the sideline. He's thrown the bombs today. 96 yards to Stephen Baker. 75 yards to Gene Taylor. As Fresno State opened up a big bulge with 21 third quarter points. Leading now, 33-16. Three and a half minutes left. The draw, Darvin Malone. And Malone gets up to about the 44. 
They'll mark his progress at the 45. David Grayson on the tackle. Well, here's a draw play. A draw play, fake a pass, give the ball to the remaining tailback. Malone is hit by David Grayson, number 45, and stopped after a pretty good gain. On third down, Wilhelm going to Bynum at the 50. You said what happened to Bynum? Where was he? There on the sideline pass play. But Greg they, Williamson covering. But, you know, they're using up a lot of the clock in there. They've, so far, they've moved about 30 yards, and, and it's taken them about uh, three minutes to do it. At that rate, they're, they're going to run out of time. A reminder that we'll have the post-game comments of Jim Sweeney shortly after the game, right here on TV 26. Second, uh, it's first down at the 50. Uh, Carl Lane grabs that one. Not much time left. Mike, I do think that the, the Bulldogs were so explosive in that, that third quarter that so they're naturally they're going to let down a little bit here when they start going against the win and they're trying to run out the clock. And this uh, takes away a lot of their deep pass threat. David Craigthorpe about to lose his first game since he became the head coach at Oregon State after two years as the athletic director at Utah State. Wilhelm being chased by Ramsey. Wilhelm unloads now, and this was almost intercepted. He was throwing for Phil Ross, and it was almost picked off by Byron Nichols. Uh, Grayson's in there, but he's hobbling around. I think he must have stubbed his toe on that AstroTurf a little bit. But is that Grayson coming out of the ball game again? Yes, it is. On third and five. They'll probably get their, their six defensive backs in there. Nichols, Williams, Greg Williams, or Williamson, Anthony Dollarhide, Michael Stewart, Roar Kelly, and Mike Tarr. They've used six defensive backs quite a bit this evening. Montagna goes in motion. It's Carl Lane. He's bumped down at the 43. Michael Stewart making the first contact. Here comes, uh, here comes Lane. He's hit hard by, here comes Michael Stewart to put the finishing touches on. Very short gain. Brings up fourth down. They're gonna, actually going to go for it when you're behind uh, by better than two touchdowns. You go for it with a minute and 45 seconds to go. Wilhelm is hit on 25 of 43, 197 yards. One touchdown, three have been intercepted. Wilhelm's got a lot of time this time, and he hits Ross again across the middle. Penalty marker is dropped. Ross goes down to the 23. Phil Ross, tackled by Peterson and Anthony Collier. We might have too many men on the field for the Bulldogs, but we'll check out this penalty. Yep, that's it. Illegal participation. That's 12 men in the field. That's the second time that's happened to the Bulldogs. That's the fourth time it's happened today. Fourth time? Fourth time they've had, well, two twice they had ten men, and twice they now they've, that's a 15-yard dead ball foul penalty, which puts them all the way down to the ten-yard line. And they did it once before, uh, 12 men on a punt return, and had to give up the ball back to give the ball back to Beavers, which led to a Beaver field goal. And yet the Bulldogs are winning handily right now, cruising along at 33 You won't win the close ones doing that. Yes, sir. I got the message, Coach. You got the message. 119 to go. Ball is at the 11 of Fresno State. Wilhelm in the corner. Great grab by Reggie Bynum. Reggie Bynum right there demonstrated why he was all Pac-10 a year ago. An 11-yard touchdown pass from Eric Wilhelm. A great catch by Bynum, Reggie Bynum. He's just, he is an outstanding receiver. He certainly didn't hurt his stats today. Watch this. He gets, he gets open, just, just open, makes a diving catch. Right in front of Byron Nichols. Nichols was defending him well. Oh, yes, he, he was covered. It was just a, there's no defense against like this. It's no defense. You, that, that catch like that, you, you can't defend against that. Bynum has caught 11 tonight for 153 yards, and that's his first touchdown. It's his seventh touchdown of the young season. And a timeout has been called with a minute and six seconds left. 
got to go for the two points because if they are successful, that puts them down by nine. So I, I couldn't understand why they, like, the Beavers didn't go for two points the last time. So, see, what stand you were talking about UCLA earlier? UCLA, they were down 16 points. They scored twice and made two point two two point conversions. I had the Beavers made two points in the last one, two points in this one. Then they were within uh, eight points of, of the Bulldogs. But let's get back to the to the special team. You have a special team coach, and his responsibility is to see that on every kicking situation you have a, just 11 men on the field, not 12 or not 10. One oh six left, thirty three twenty two, Fresno State. And they're going for the two point conversion. It's got to be a pass from Wilhelm. Doesn't have to be, but chances are eighty percent that it will be. Well, their running game hasn't been that strong. They're going to throw the ball, but they're going to take it. They're doing it in a from a compact formation here. Adams is split wide to the left side. Bynum now moving in motion. Wilhelm's looking for Bynum. Oh, is he dead? Michael Stewart, just as Wilhelm had the left arm cocked back to throw. Ooh, what a vicious hit by Michael Stewart. Mm. I'm sure Wilhelm felt that and will up until Wednesday. Let's watch the blitz here. Number five, Michael Stewart jumps through. He came off the corner. Bang. Boom. Mm. Oh, that hurt. I could feel that up here. So the score remains. Fresno State 33, Oregon State 22 with 66 seconds left. Don't forget, it'll be Fresno State and Cal Poly San, San Luis Obispo at 7 o'clock at Bulldog Stadium next Saturday night. Now you'll see the onside kick. I think you'll, without any question, you'll see the onside kick. Dave Kripthorpe, after victories over Idaho and California, felt that he could be 4-0 going into an October 5th meeting against USC. But, of course, that would have meant a victory over Fresno State. And the Beavers play Grambling in Shreveport, Louisiana, next Saturday. Well, However, that's going to be a tough game for them because Grambling has a lot of speed. However, that's not going to come to pass. We had a 15-yard penalty on the, on the... There's a dead ball foul, evidently. A holding penalty against Fresno State. So that's 10 yards. Now Nielsen will kick off from the 50. <laughs> Kelly Skipper is the lone back for Fresno State. Standing back at his own two. Because everybody anticipates it's going to be an onside kick, and it should be. 33, 22, 66 seconds left. Remember, the Bulldogs have three straight home games coming up, San Luis Obispo, and then next Saturday, then Hawaii, and then Jose State. There's the onside kick, and it's covered very well by Mike Moffitt, number 82. That's the hands team when they anticipate the onside to get the guys with the best hands in there to cover, and then Moffitt did his job. That's a good idea, and the first thing to do is just follow the ball. Don't try to pick it up. Kevin Sweeney at quarterback. Scambry is the new tight end. That shows you how the scoring has gone in this game. Can you believe it was only 9-6 Fresno State at halftime? Now look, 33-22. So we've had fireworks here in the second half in Corvallis. Sweeney will go down on his left knee. And the clock is still running. The Beavers have a couple of timeouts left, and they'll take one right here. So Jim Sweeney is about to be 5-1 and one against Pac-10 opposition. This will be his first victory over Oregon State, but he has two against Oregon and two against Arizona, including the opener of the season down in Tucson against the Wildcats from the University of Arizona last season. I think they'll let the Bulldogs represent the Pac-10 in the Rose Bowl then. What do you think then? <laughs> I think they'd be happy to play that great California Bowl that's, play, that's played in Fresno where their fans can see them play. And that I'm sure they're not thinking about that right now because they've got a long season ahead of them. But this Bulldog team has potential. Well, right? I bet you they are thinking about that. Sure. Well, you've got to be motivated by something. You know, we used to try to every year say we're going to go to the Rose Bowl. We've only made it a few times, but we always had that in mind. 
win the national championship, go to the Big Ten championship, and go to the Rose Bowl, and and it's it's great to have high goals and high ambitions. Fifty-four seconds left. Fresno State 33, Oregon State 22. Look at this. Looks like punt formation almost. <laughs> Talk about a tailback. That's a tailback that's really back. That was Taylor. First, they're just defending in case of a mishandling of the snap. And now Oregon State will probably take its last timeout, and indeed that's exactly what the Beavers do. So they're out of timeouts now with 50 seconds left. In case you're wondering about the stats of a couple of Fresno State players, Williams, 28 carries for 114 yards, a touchdown. Kevin Sweeney, 8 out of 23, 277 yards, two touchdowns and two interceptions. Well, either two, maybe three interceptions. But, uh, but, uh, well, Buzz Stroud, who's keeping our stats, says two. So I'll go with his figures until well, I'm proven well, wrong. But Buzz, he's probably right. But, uh, but, but I... 50 seconds left, and Kevin now will probably go down on one knee and just run off the closing seconds. And Fresno State just 50 seconds away from a 2-0 start of 1985. So this tacked on to the 26-6 victory over UNLV. We'll get the Bulldogs ready for Cal Poly San Luis Obispo at 7 o'clock next Saturday night in Fresno. Oregon State out of timeouts. They can't do anything about it now. No, but they'll get the ball one more time because they'll have the 25-second clock run down. Then they'll take a five-yard penalty and punt the ball. Oregon State will be 2-1 and one overall, getting ready to go against Grambling down in Louisiana next Saturday night. And then they've got a date October the 5th against USC in the Coliseum. They should blow the whistle now. There it is. Now the clock goes down to 11 seconds and the penalty for delay of the game. An explosive third quarter did it for Fresno State. The 96-yard bomb from Sweeney to Stephen Baker, who took the ball about the 35 and did the rest with his speed. And then a 75-yard touchdown play from Sweeney to Gene Taylor. And Jim Sweeney is about to be 49 and 32 in his eight years plus at Fresno State. Mike Mancini ready to punt. Mike can hang it up there. Another high snap, and he's going to take the safety. <laughs> He'll just run out of uh, the inline and the safety, and now it'll be a free kick from the 20 yard line. But two more points on the ledger for. Oregon State, 33 to 24, Fresno State. They had no intention of punting the ball. I guess not. No, they got to, now they get a free kick from the uh, from the 20 yard line. And if you can hang the ball in the air for four seconds, and a punt, they'll punt the ball rather than place kick it. Hang the ball in the air about four seconds. The game, will, well, the play has to be completed, but the game's over. The game's won. Well, Jim Sweeney said after the UNLV game, we are not a one-dimensional team, and he's, he proved it in that game, proving it again here tonight against Pac-10 opponent Oregon State. Well, the, I think the offense was even more varied today than it was last week because they had more backs effective than the running backs. Showed a few more things like reverses. So it showed that, uh, you know, that uh, Lavelle Thomas can run. It showed that uh, Kelly Sp uh, Skipper had more opportunity. And along with Mosley, Mosley came in and did a good job of running. So when you have four running backs, then you've got, you can stand the attrition of some injuries, you know, throughout the season. And you're going to get, well, you're going to get sprains and going to get bruised and they won't be as early as effective. And they've got that insurance against those things that they didn't have last year. You know, this game has lasted all better than three and a half hours. I certainly do. I, the game seemed to get longer and longer all the time. You and I have been standing the whole game. That's right. But that's, all, that's all right for a young fellow like you. But uh, With a lot of penalties and a lot of passes, you're going to have a long game. Free kick will go out of bounds at about the 16. Reggie Hawkins just watching it skip out of bounds. Nobody touched the ball, so there will be a five-yard penalty assessed. 
We still have four seconds left. Jim Sweeney getting the handshakes. Greg Peterson. There's Greg Ramsey along the sidelines. I think Oscar Cross, number six. That's the first time Sweeney's been relaxed during the whole game. Look at him. I think he feels that the game is secure. Well, I think he has every reason to do to feel that way with four seconds left and a nine-point lead. We've talked about the explosiveness of the offense in the third quarter, but until the game was really in hand for Fresno State, the defense, again, excelled. Oh, the defense uh, for the first three quarters was, well, there's a tendency when you get a three-touchdown lead to let up. The defense did to somewhat, and but they, they were just uh, tremendous for the first three quarters. Squib-type kick, and it's fielded over here by Paul Saunders, or uh, Phil Ross. So another second has ticked off the clock. Uh-uh. Well... We'll give him a time for one play, huh? All right, one play. Now we'll find out if Wilhelm can throw long. Let, us run, let, let uh, Bynum run a draw play. He can do everything else. Let's see if, if he can. Or, well, he's run flankers so far this season. He's lined up in the backfield, split in, in the slot, all over. Jim Sweeney's got to be uh, very, very pleased indeed coming in here. There's Jack Lingo, the athletic director at uh, Fresno State along the sidelines. This is a big win for Fresno State it's been for Sweeney and his staff and his players. They've done a great job, and I think it, it augurs well for the rest of the season. I, I'm sure that the Fresno uh, State fans back in the Fresno area are, are really happy about this victory, and, and they're going to back this team to the hill the entire season. They'll back that stadium every game. They had an overflow crowd of just under 34,000 last week. Wilhelm, that's the longest pass he's thrown tonight. And it is intercepted. Who grabbed it off over there? Byron Nichols gets his first interception for Fresno State. And it's all over. The Bulldogs beat Oregon State 33-24.